there's chooks galore in the latest ABC Organic Gardener magazine with simple ideas to make sure your hens are happy in their coop. You'll also learn about growing perfect peas, marvellous mulberries and natives that will attract birds to your backyard. Trees are a priority for the planet, so we've filled this issue with top tips to keep them healthy. Organic Gardener magazine, available from newsagents and abcmagazines.com.au. The 2021 AFL Premiership season on ABC Radio and on ABC Sport Digital. A special night that's happened just five times in the history of VFL AFL footy as the dry ice and the smoke lights up out of a Hawthorne race and Sean Burgoyne through a guard of honour which features a couple of other 400 gamers in Brent Harvey alongside Michael Tuck and Dustin Fletcher, Kevin Bartlett. They watch on as Sean Burgoyne is about to join an exclusive club as just the fifth player in the history of VFL AFL footy to reach the 400 game milestone. His four kids break through the banner first and the Hawthorne and Port Adelaide champ. It's a beautiful synergy tonight. The team in which he won his first premiership with Port Adelaide in 2004 up against his current club Hawthorne playing his 243rd game for the Hawks tonight. It is game number 400 in total. Just the fifth man in the history of the game. A hug for his kids as they fight over some of the great paper from the banner. And Hawthorne's number nine is off to join his teammates for the preliminary warm-up. It is one hell of a milestone. The rarest of achievements in terms of games played. Let's pay tribute to the great Sean Burgoyne. Number nine, Sean Burgoyne. When you first start it, you just take it for granted, the opportunity that you're given to be an A4 player and to play each week. As most senior players you feel talk to them, they enjoy and they really savour every moment as you get older. That's exactly what I'm doing. Congratulations. Meeting. What a treat it's been to watch this guy's career. Sean Burgoyne moves in and slots his second of the afternoon. Remarkable player, unbelievable stoppage player, just had a bit of everything. Tall, strong, quick. Yeah, he's just a gun and a gun person too. He got it off to Duray, back to Burgoyne. He blazes away at goal. Will he sneak it in? He oh. does! Pull up quick hand pass away to Burgoyne and a quick kick on goal. He's drilled it. How many dudes you know roll like this? How many dudes you know flow like this? Not many, if any. Not many, if any. How many dudes you know got the skills to go and rock a show like this? Uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't know anybody. A great footballer, but he's also a great bloke. He loves people, loves the game, loves his teammates. Silky, smooth operator. 37-year-old Sean Burgoyne. <laughs> Absolutely living up to his moniker. That's silk from there. Play footy the right way, the hard way, the tough way, the skillful way, did it all. Joins that very, very illustrious 400 club. He sits beautifully amongst that group. Burgoyne goes from about 42 and it's another one. For Hanrahan trying to give him a second chance. It didn't matter because I fell in the hands of Silk Burgoyne. Silk by name, Silk by nature. That's his first. Burgoyne did the crumbing. Snap oh, it across God. his body all the way for a goal. How many dudes you know roll like this? How many dudes you know flow like this? Burgoyne, the kick was never going to miss. How many dudes you know got the skills to go and rock a show like this? A broad smile. Uh, uh, the man they call uh, Silk. Know. Silk was right. How many dudes you know roll like this? How many dudes you know flow like this? He would weave through stoppages. He'd get the ball. He'd explode into space. And he'd use it so well. And pass into Burgoyne on the run. Gets the 35 and kicks the goal. My greatest recollection of the impact that he had was when we were at Port Adelaide. Yeah, it was a really tight prelim final against St Kilda at Footy Park. Sean, you know, smothered the ball late in that game, and in you know, a game that's decided by a kick, um, that's at the top of the goal screen. Up towards Gary, Quera's there at the back. Quera, the former Port Adelaide player, brilliant dive by Sean Burgoyne over the line. What a magnificent effort by Sean Burgoyne. If he doesn't play that smother. Who knows what the result of that game is? And then they go on and win the flag the next week. There's the Over towards Sean Burgoyne. He'll get three. This will be a goal. Bang! Goal, Sean Burgoyne. Off to Burgoyne. Dangerous. Right forward pocket. 25 out. Burgoyne, what a great goal! He is a fierce competitor. Great durability. What is actually the great beauty of them is just how competitive their will to win and their competitiveness in the contest. That's the great feature of Sean Burgoyne's play. This is why they got into the club. They gave up a lot to get Sean Burgoyne. And the moment has arrived. And he scores!
foot to the moment. Oh, I think we've helped Sean enormously as a footy club, but gee whiz, he's helped us. Trots over the paint of 50, strikes it beautifully as well. All class is Sean Burgoyne. Stolen away by Burgoyne from 55 out, sells some candy, then heads for home with a beautiful solo goal. Jeez, how was the shimmy then? Sean Burgoyne showing his class. That role model type of sacrifice and humility in a professional game, that's not common. And for him to role model that for the rest of his teammates in our club and the rest of the competition, I think says a lot about Sean Burgoyne. How many dudes you know got the skills to go and rock it? show like this uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't know anybody How many dudes you know roll like this? How many dudes you know flow like this? Not many, if any, not many, if any Big moments and big games, you know, big finals and stuff, that's the other one that you associate him with. Remarkable player, one of the very, very best. 400 games for Sean Burgoyne reaching the milestone tonight here at Docklands. It feels like a uh, big-time event, despite the fact that Hawthorne are four and ten, Port Adelaide are ten and four. The power making their way out onto the ground at Docklands. The roof is open. It's fair to say it's a cold night. It's around eight degrees at the moment. It's expected to get as cold as six, but the feels like temperature is much lower than that. The stadium, when we walked in tonight, there was really some seldom light on the playing arena and just the light projection on the main wing showing Silk 400 with the silhouette of Sean Burgoyne. And, of course, the Silk 400 message splashed across the advertising hoardings. And the Guard of Honour didn't just feature the 400 gamers, but also a number of people that have been... Uh, heavy influences in the career of Sean Burgoyne, Darrell White, Gilbert McAdam, Gavin Wanganine, his premiership teammate, Jared Roughhead and Isaac Smith all out on the playing arena to welcome Sean Burgoyne. It is Hawthorne and Port Adelaide as round 16 continues, a special night for the man they call Silk. We're here at Docklands on Grandstand AFL. Corbin Middlemass in commentary. There's no late change for either team. The respective subs, Ollie Hanrahan for Hawthorne and Martin Frederick for Port Adelaide. Andrew Mays is here to call the footy with me. G'day, Maisie. Hello, Corbin. Absolute privilege to be here. I was lucky enough to be here for Boomer Harvey's 400th at the very same venue a number of years ago. So I didn't think we'd get a couple in a row as quickly as this, but what a special night it is. Absolutely. The, the milestones for Sean Burgoyne, he's had wins in game 200, 300 and 350. So he's 3-1 in his uh, four ma major milestones, having lost in game 100 way back in 2006. He made his debut at this ground in 2002 in a match against St Kilda. That was on the 14th of April 2002. Port won the game by 83 points. He had just one mark and one kick. Obviously a very different time to make your debut and a lot of time spent on the bench that night for Sean Burgoyne. What a career he's had. Traded at the end of 2009. Three premierships with Hawthorne. One with Port Adelaide. As always, Saturday night on Grandstand AFL, our number one picks, Brendan Goddard and Brett Delidio. Good evening, Beach. G'day, boys. How are we? It's a... Uh Pretty good. Just chilly little uh, night, isn't it? Freezing, Brett. mate. Freezing. <laughs> Freezing. A few long sleeves out there already from the yeah. port boys. One of my one of my favourites has got it on. I'm pumped with that. I can uh, I couldn't imagine what uh, a few of the interstate teams of Perth or even you know, Brisbane's and the Gold Coast are saying about Melbourne now and how cold it is being down here and suck it up, lads. You'd rather be in your state in lockdown. So, but uh, you know, looking forward to it. So yeah, silk. It's all about silk, isn't it? So. Um, amazing achievements, enough being said about him because he's a, a special human and Brett's had probably more to do with him than all of us in the box, so he can elaborate. But uh, looking forward to a good game. Hawthorne have been pretty solid the last month, two and two, but uh, we had a chat to Brendan Bolton a number of weeks ago and just talked about how their focus had shift towards more about intensity, pressure around the ball, team defence. Um, I think that's been pretty evident in their games being played, although I said it's two and two, but they've been more competitive. And for my import, this is just an opportunity uh, you know, to stamp their authority, keep finding that consistency that, you know, we're questioning them over, um, you know, travelling here now, but being those flat track bullies, as some people have labelled them, I don't, I don't fully believe that, but um, failed it. you know, sometimes perception is reality, so maybe it's just, it's just another chance just to, uh, to debunk that theory. This is only the fifth time in the history of the game that someone breaks the 400-game barrier. You played in big finals against Sean Burgoyne. As an opposition player, was there something you looked at him and thought, Damn it, I hate that he does that particularly well or that made him so difficult to play against. Um, it's just... Uh, I was really young when he was at Port Adelaide, um, but he was always... Between him and his brother, I think they were probably the two biggest focus that we had yep. for memory going in. Wow. And it probably, in reality, is probably more around Silk and about his ability around stoppages. And as you alluded to last week, just Brendan Lade putting it wherever they wanted to. And 
his ability through traffic. We forget about, I think we've forgotten about how good he was in traffic and around stoppages and clearances and a clearance play because yeah. that role obviously changed then coming to Hawthorne um, and what he's done there has been, I think, you know, completely different to what he was doing early in his career at Port Adelaide when he won a premiership. So, um, yeah, no, it's just, just you know, I think Silk sums it up. But his durability, his flexibility since he's been to Hawthorne, I don't think anyone kind of envisaged that's where his career would kind of take him, would it? in his early part of his career and being the player he was. So, um, And as we may mention, Hawthorne, Alistair Clarkson mentioned that you know that we might get two years out of Silk when he arrived at Hawthorne. And <laughs> Still here we are another ten years later. Brett Delidio's here, one-time Hawthorne staffer, but of course former <laughs> Richmond and uh, GWS champ. Um, you, you obviously knew him personally in your time at, at Hawthorne. Yep. What sort of a guy is he? Uh, just a, a really quiet, humble uh, bloke. But when he spoke, certainly uh, as an older player, you, you move up the, the rows uh, in the amphitheatre and he was right at the back corner. Everyone <laughs> knew that was Silk's spot. And that was exactly the same with all the older guys when I was playing as well. But when he spoke, everyone listened and he really just, blokes were like, oh, yeah, actually, Silk gets it. You know, he, he, we know what he's talking about. That must be right. So we'll, we'll just move on from that. But he was just a, a lovely guy and you certainly didn't get a feel at all that he was, you know, a 370, 80 game player at that stage. So... Uh, mate, yeah, can't speak highly enough. I've been one of the hardest blokes to tackle that I reckon I've played against. Just incredibly powerful. A uh, bit like Dusty in terms of trying to tackle him with that ability to fend, but just uh, put in three or four quick steps and he, just, he was gone. But, uh, yeah, great achievement. And I'm wrapped that he's got to the 400. I think that's a, a, a perfect way for, you know, being one of the oh, the only Indigenous player to get to 400. I think it's a, it's a great accolade for him and, and his family. You know, it seemed that gone through the banner more than uh, just about any <laughs> any of us. Is it, isn't this a good example of keeping like good people and, at your club and yep. for your culture at your club? Because you know, if he was anywhere else, I would have thought maybe bar one or two others, he's he's done four or five years ago. Yeah, and it wasn't all about just you know reaching four hundred all that all that kind of individual stuff. This is about keeping a, a great human and a great man for the footy club and their culture at the footy club to help develop nurture, um, build and continue this, you know, culture they've had for a very long time. So if all the other clubs are watching, this is, you know, this is what you get from it. And then I think Fremantle's the other example at the minute. Yeah. Because I don't think I can think of any others that are taking that chance on an older player. Mm. Are they? They move more on, mate. The, the, old right. the old timers will tell you, when Kevin Bartlett um, first reached this milestone to get to 400 they thought that that was it there's no one that possibly going to be able to get to 400 games again michael tuck obviously went there and some was able to uh, hold the game's record for many years at 426 dustin fletcher reached 400 brent harvey went past it and obviously set the high water mark at 432 and now sean burgoyne at 400 games tonight to put it into context would have to wait for 2023 for another player to reach 400 and that's if David Mundy, Eddie Betts and Scott Pendlebury keep Pendlebury. playing every wow. game during that period of time. So um, that's when it will next be on the horizon for us. Uh, a special night. A lower crowd than obviously what you'd ordinarily expect for something of uh, this occasion given uh, the Caps due to the pandemic that are going on at the moment. So you'd estimate there's a crowd of around 15,000 or so in at the moment. It is NAIDOT week. There's going to be an exchange of gifts. Sean Burgoyne's been sent to toss the coin with Tom Jonas. Jess Webster's in the front row for us on the boundary. Jess, good evening. Good evening, Corb. Such a wonderful feeling down here at, at ground level. It was a really uh, special pre-game ceremony. As you mentioned, still under COVID restrictions, so um, but there is a decent amount of people here. A lot of blue, uh, brown and gold in the crowd, rather, and you get the feeling that uh, Sean Burgoyne will uh, get cheered every time he touches it tonight, I think. And uh, just a note on the conditions, it is freezing. Uh, the roof is open. It's 8 degrees, but a wind chill factor is 6 degrees. I am rugged up, though, ready to go. It's going to be a special night at the Footy Corp. Absolutely. Thanks, Jess. Tom Jonas actually won the toss and pointed towards the Coventry end. The roof is open, of course, to allow more people in the venue, uh, given that it's now classed as an outdoor venue rather than an indoor venue. You touched on the game off the top beach. The Hawthorne have been really good in recent weeks. Since the bye, they've gone from last to first in terms of time spent in the forward half, and they've also gone from last to second in terms of forward half intercept so the numbers are showing that they have gone to town particularly on their game style and Port Adelaide it's really been that's the part of the game that we've questioned in recent times what are they they used to be this forward half scoring team which has been the trend for good sides this year they've almost reverted to being a back half scoring team and we're still sort of scratching our head as to what they're meant to be no, I don't think that's where the inconsistencies come from isn't it because I don't think 
you can find consistent consistency in form and winning when just relying on winning the ball in the back half and scoring from that. Um, although, yeah, Melbourne, Melbourne spend more time, but they set up really well behind the ball. But if stats, if stats prove me right, then winning in the back half, you score less and it's harder to score than actually playing the game in your front half and getting better opportunities and better looks from turnovers that way. So, yeah, interesting, but... Uh, the good thing about it, they've got uh, you know another what, six to eight weeks to find form coming to finals, getting a number of players back. As we know, a couple of younger, really influential players, which will help them. Hawthorne and Port Adelaide, a perfect matchup as Sean Burgoyne breaks the 400 barrier on Grandstand AFL. You're with Andrew Mays. Lysett and Segler to do battle in the ruck. Segler won it down. He was looking... In the path there of Warpool, couldn't find him, coming bursting through on the outside, kick inside 50, Port Adelaide Marsh couldn't gather, became the tackler over the top, locks it up inside forward 50, umpire circling, holding the ball. Well, that's an early one there as Arningham gets to his feet and asks the umpire, there wasn't much more I could do. So Marshall with an early opportunity to open the scoring in Sean Burgoyne's 400th game. It was a good attack, wasn't it, from uh, young Farrell off the line there. Trying to find it and break out of the centre center circle, but Farrell attacked it hard, got it going forward. Well done by Big Marshall to lock it up. In comes Marshall, 30 metres out, directly in front. Should kick the opener of the evening. Puts his foot through it, guides it, and hits the post. One behind. Minute played, opening term here on Grandstand AFL. Port Adelaide by one. Sean Burgoyne. Lining up in the back line for Hawthorne. He got some embraces from Motlop and Pal Pepper before the bounce. And then Georgiades and Connor Rosie both coming across to shake his hand as well. So an unusual start with uh, plenty of congratulations for the Hawthorne champ. Long kick down the middle from Hardwick. Forcing the turnover. Bruce stole it from Motlop. Hands it to Jaff. Runs to the front edge of the centre square. Blazes to an open goal square. He's off target. Pitches just before the behind post and through for a minor. Hawthorne move it end to end. A minor score. One each. Behind either way, 90 seconds in. No late change here, by the way. The two subs, Hanrahan and Frederick. No late change across town. There's a game at the Melbourne Cricket Ground happening right now between Fremantle and Carlton. No late change there. Crowden and Cottrell to subs. We'll keep you updated throughout the night. McKenzie to kick in. Georgiades was his target. Just forward of, or just backward rather, of centre wing for Port Adelaide. Couldn't take the mark. Now towards the boundary line. Just keeping it in was Bramble. Hand pass, though, went uh, straight to Rosie in the long sleeves tonight. Hand pass to Wines, who wanted the boundary line. Happy to be pushed over. In between wing and half forward. Port Adelaide advancing down this broadcast wing. Hawks coming off back-to-back -back wins over the two teams from New South Wales. A big win over the Giants, and really their form franked earlier today with a win over the Demons from the boundary throw-in. Segler won it down. Bramble went without it. Spills to Amon. Gets the kick inside 50 from the wing. Sends a spiralling ball deep to Dixon. Frost kept his feet. Dixon goes over. Frost wins the footy. Hand pass to Scrimshaw. Kicks Hawthorne out to halfback. And Bramble, in Isaac Smith's old number 16, takes the mark at left halfback. Short pass is good to Mitchell. He takes the mark in front of Wine. Still left half back for the Hawks. One behind a piece. We've played three minutes here in the opening term. High kick over centre wing. He sets himself underneath it. Ran under the ball. Just got a fist to it. Roving front and centre though is Warpool. Looking for the hand pass inside. Almost lost the ball in the process. Shields hand pass too hot for Segler. Who has to go back and mop up. Got it to Mitchell, now to Bramble. Nice dummy, gets himself to centre wing. Kicks inside 50. McKenzie going back with the flight, left it. Hawks uh, was Bruce diving to his left who couldn't take the mark. Goes back in for seconds. Was he caught? Oh, yes. And Bruce will receive the free kick. Left forward pocket, 40 metres out from goal. Lysette coming in over the top of the Hawthorne veteran. Burton's got the matchup on Bruce at the moment. I'm no doubt those two would have matched up uh, early on in Burton's career before he made the switch, but usually a pretty good kick from uh, any sort of part on the ground, Luke Bruce. He'll kick from just inside 50. Lays into it beautifully. And the man who's played the most games with Sean Burgoyne gets them off to the perfect start this evening. A goal to Luke Bruce. 1-1-7 the Hawks, one behind Port Adelaide, four minutes played opening turn. 
they're doing a good job to get numbers around the footy hawks. We've done a number of games here in the year and they were smacked on general spread, outnumbering at the contest. But what they got away with a little one there. They, there wasn't outnumbered at Port when they did go forward. But they just got to be careful that it's not the beast of the honeypot that the, the forwards are resetting and actually representing or being in position to represent down the line or that long kick when it does go in. Because Port, as you made mention, winning the ball more in the back half, but they set up really well with a generally a plus one or a loose behind the ball. But both teams doing a pretty good job. It hasn't been a free flowing first uh, four or five minutes here. So Hawthorne. Uh, kind of get one against it, the trend with only this second inside 50, I think. Restart back in the middle. It'll be Lysett and Segler. They have to wait for it. Lysett wins it down. Footy comes back to Segler. He's locked up, taken to ground. We'll have a ball up in the middle. The Hawks in their home strip. And the brown shorts and Port Adelaide in their traditional jumper as well. In the black this evening with the white shorts from the uh, ball up, Amon hands it back to Burn Jones. Hurried kick to centre half forward. The scrimshaw crashes the pack, but uh, Port Adelaide win it. Hand pass from Mays out to Dixon. Shoots to the top of the goals for it. Mays, he's back there and marking, racing back towards the goal line. The footy came in like a tracer bullet, stuck his arms up, and marked just in front of his face, top of the goal square. Well, it's a good lesson for all young kids watching to always keep your eye on the ball because that could have quite easily smacked him in the back of the head, but. Kicked a crucial goal last week, didn't he, Sam Mays? Mm. Nice for him to get one. Good to see him getting a start this week. Just his sixth game for the year, the go-ahead goal against the Swans. And now an early settler for him. 15 out right in front, no problems. Through it goes. Port Adelaide get there first. 1-1-7 each of two, six minutes in. Throughout the night, we're on the SMS 0437 774 774. And our grandstand AFL experts, Brendan Goddard and Brett Delidio. Yeah, it was a mung kick forward, but uh, I thought Dixon just had, I think it was an outnumber there of Power Pepper just, as we watched the replay, just running to his left out in a bit of space, and he chose to go at goal, but Mays uh, in the right spot at the right time, started as a sub last week, yeah, came on, had an impact, and now gets a, a start on the ground. She played two and a half, one and a half games last week, he started in the he SA too. NFL, yeah. and it was a late injury to Hamish Hartlett, and all of a sudden he was playing in the seniors a, an hour or so later. Back in the middle, 117 apiece here after seven minutes on Grandstand AFL. John Newcomb comes onto the field this evening for the first time and straight into the middle. Ball bounced beautifully. Segler, one up behind him. Nice hand pass coming the way of Wines, who sockers off the ground towards right half forward. Ball bouncing in front of Jath. Was he holding on to Motlop? Yes, says the umpire. And Motlop will have a look inside 50, pokes the pass. It's over the head of Rosie, who was playing for the free kick in the back. Didn't get it. Coming hard on that occasion. Hand pass comes out the back towards Rosie, and he sees it out of bounds. In fact, he's pushed into the fence. A bit of... Uh, well, there's a bit of an injury here in back play as well. I don't know who that is. Might be Farrell, perhaps, down in the left forward pocket. This doesn't look good at all. Play has stopped as it's out of bounds. Mm. It is, in fact, Farrell, and he's holding his knee, and there was a number of Port Adelaide players surrounding him and calling for the trainer straight away. And it's not good. He's... There's a camera on him on another TV, but it looks like he's in some serious pain. Yeah, let's hope it's not as bad as what it looks, but... Oh. Oh. Talk us through it, Beach. Uh, it's almost like a little hyperextension... Giannis Antico de Kumbo Little number <laughs> That was brilliant Oh yeah, no, oh. that's not good at all No That is a nasty hyperextension off the knee That's more Is is that more like You get your PCL there or your MCL Rather than the eight Because the ACL is more of a twist motion, isn't it? Yeah yep. That's more of a hyperextension back We've had some rotten luck today. Jack Buckley went down early in the game today for the Giants and they're fearing an ACL there. Now, Kane Farrell with probably that foot being planted and the hyperextension with full body weight coming in the other direction. Thank goodness Harris Andrews was another one this afternoon yeah. who looked like he was down for a long time and might not play in this season at one point, but it was good to see him get back out on the park. From the ball in, kick inside 50. Hawks camped underneath this. Lysett did well to double fist it, getting back with the flight of the ball. We'll have a ball in the left forward pocket as Farrell's still making his way to the boundary line in front of us. We may have to wait 
because if no, the ball, no stretcher. Yeah, it's, it's still a danger if the ball is to come out here. So the, the physios are in danger as well. Boundary throw in deep forward for Port from the stoppage. Winds like a ball just grabs it, bounces off the opposition. Hand pass went back into dispute. Frost dangerous, hand pass, Port win it. Motlop, hand pass away to Dixon, gives it to Georgiades. Spun around in the Phillips tackle, taken to ground and a ball up in the pocket for the power. And only now Kane Farrell being helped off by a couple of trainers. Bergman takes his place on the ground for the time being and Martin Frederick, the sub, is warming up early. Ball tossed back in, uh, ball, ball up rather, Newcomb comes away with the clearance, hand pass to Phillips, O'Brien over the top, the crowd's enjoyed his work from last week, Kick came from Mitchell up towards Alir though for Port Adelaide, who turns it over to Houston and back to Wines, so off one step, goes towards Dixon, in front of him Jaff, did well to get across in front of the pack, double fist spoil and he forces a boundary throw in at the top of 50. Jess Webster's on the boundary, Jess what can you say? Yeah, Kane Fowler, he hasn't gone into the rooms yet. He's just with the doctors and the physios on the bench. They're just checking out that knee. He was grimacing as he come off, but, um, yeah, I'll keep an eye on it. But uh, Kay, uh, Martin Frederick, rather, was warming up on the boundary line. Hasn't taken the warm-up top off yet. So just waking, just waiting to see the final decision from the doctors. Scores level 10 minutes in. We'll do it all again for the boundary throw, and the ball's back out of play. 50 out from the Powers goal. Sean Burgoyne in his 400th game tonight. The fifth man in the history of VFL AFL footy to reach the milestone. Lysett grabs it out of the ruck. Tackled the ground by Segler. Dispossessed. Dump says play on. Boak high up and under. Just carrying the 50 metre arc. Spills down to Burgoyne. There's the cheer as he gets the clearing kick out of the defensive arc. Stolen away from Warple by Bergman. He blazes away inside 50. Kicks it straight to Howe at centre half back. Now the quick outletting kick towards the wing. Strong mark taken in front by Bramley. Wanted to go quickly. Instead he goes short to centre wing. Mark taken by Nash, who has Jath running past. Hand pass didn't do him any favours, and Jath wasn't able to grab it, and he almost jumps the fence into the front row. Such was his momentum. We'll have a boundary throw in just forward of centre wing for the Hawks. Locked up at 1-1-7 apiece here after 11 minutes. Farrell off with a suspected serious knee injury. We'll bring you updates as soon as we have them to hand. Toss back into play. McAvoy over the top. Socket away from that pack. Howe leads the race. The boundary line beats him. He's happy to see it over for a ball in. Still just backward of centre wing now for the Hawks. There's somewhat of a strategic arm wrestle going on that Hawthorne have got a plus one behind the ball and Port have chosen to have a plus one around the stoppages so it might be a hard task for Hawthorne's mids if they got, they're down a plus one there. From the throw-in, Wines scoops it out for Port Adelaide. Hand pass to Motlop, went back through the traffic. Hand pass to Marshall. His hand pass a little too hot for Wines. Marshall goes back in, collects, tackled, in trouble, holding the ball, free kick, Hawthorne. And it'll be Mitchell, the Brownlow medalist, to get up and take it on the logo of the city wing. He does a U-turn into the middle of the ground, kicks deep, forward for Hawthorne, thumped away at the back. Kaczynski overran it, O'Brien scoops it up, hand pass to O'Meara, kicks outside of the right boot but misses. A minor score, the Hawks back in front, 1-2 to 1-1, 13 minutes in, Jess Webster on the boundary. Paperwork has officially been lodged. Kane Farrell will be subbed out of the game with that knee injury. He's in tears on the bench, guys. I think everyone's fearing the worst down here. Uh, Martin Frederick, the sub for Port Adelaide, will come into the game. Line a long kick up towards the wing. Massive fist coming there from Hardwick. Straight down to Bergman, though, even though it travelled 20 metres. Hand pass to Ali and out of Pal Pepe, who steps inside, kicks beyond centre wing. Marshall set himself, fell to his knees at the crucial moment. Frost. His hand pass missed the target, trying to run onto it was Greaves, couldn't do so. Bergman came again for Port Adelaide. Now Motlop's clean us through the scrimmage and he hand passes to Wines who has Dixon all alone in the pocket. Got it to him on the bounce. He turns inside, was looking for the hand pass back there from Drew. Didn't find it in the end. Now a chance for Hawthorne through Mitchell. Mitchell hand pass to Phillips, left half back. He's got nothing, blazes away. And Burn Jones eats that for breakfast on his chest. No other within 10 metres of it. So the All-Australian right in front of the interchange. Darcy Burn Jones heads down to right half forward. Marshall the target. Damon Greaves all over him, gives away the free kick. Marshall to take it, 60 out right half forward. First time we've seen Port here at Docklands since round one where they did a job on North Melbourne that afternoon. 
Kicks into the pocket, wanted Dixon. Hardigan claiming the mark, it's not paid. Hand pass hurriedly to Scrimshaw. Across the goal face, kicks Hawthorne from one back pocket to the other. Bramble collects, hands it back to Hardwick. Spears his pass and O'Brien takes the mark right half back for the Hawks. Hawthorne by one, 15 minutes in. O'Brien towards the wing. Oh, great mark by Kaczynski. He's able to reel it in with the left hand. Now he wants to get things moving on the wing. Not a great kick. Jonas chops in front of Warple. He gives a fair serve to his teammate as well. Jonas goes defensively with his pass. Back inside defensive 50 to Alir. Short pass. Still inside defensive 50. Lands with Motlop. Motlop just goes back to have a think about the outlet kick here. Chip over the top. He's not bad either. He finds McKenzie who's at left half back. No cannon on this occasion, just pulls his kick short to aim on, tried to get a hand pass away, Howell awake to it, steals the footy, hand pass to Warple, shakes a tackle, City Wing, kicks Hawthorne towards Kaczynski, Jonas over the top, finds the safety of the boundary line as he punches it away and a throw in 30 out from the Hawthorne goal. Uh, the other game at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, Fremantle hosting Carlton tonight. Second leg of a double header, Carlton with the first couple of goals. The Blues 2-2, Fremantle 2 behind. So it's similar stage midway through the opening turn. Tossed into play. Hawks deep into attack here. Not able to get the hand pass anywhere there was Pal Pepper. He was trying to bust his way out of a tackle. Umpire says he had enough opportunity to get rid of it. He had one arm pinned. And the free kick going Hawthorne's way. O'Meara pops up with it. And he'll have to kick this... Essentially 50 metres to carry the goal line. We haven't really seen any great highlights at the moment in this game. It hasn't uh, reached any great heights, but some good forward pressure. A lot of fumbles in and around traffic at the moment, I reckon. As soon as they can clean that up, they'll break out and open the game up a little bit. Hawks lead it by one. We've played 16 minutes in the opening term. O'Meara comes in, lays into it from 48. It's coming back, not enough. One behind. The league now two. Well, it's, Hawthorne have got the plus one behind the ball, so, so they're doing a good job to bring the ball to ground when, it, when Port do have a, an inside 50 and then that plus one's cleaning it up and then generally it's bouncing straight back out. So um, Port is struggling to find that, you know, re-stoppage, re-entry and then get another opportunity to hit the scoreboard. Oh, McKenzie comes wide to a two-on-one. They all went down in front and Aaliyah takes the mark. They went down because Bergman pushed Phillips, according to the umpire. And a free kick for Tom Phillips, and the Hawks can pump it straight back inside. Plenty of hang time onto the kick into the pocket. No mirror. Takes the mark, pressed up against the boundary line. Left forward pocket for the Hawks. Doesn't kick a lot of goals, does he, Jager? I don't know whether he's got this See, one in his uh, repertoire. Didn't he used to kick? He used to get forward a little bit of it when he was at the Suns. At the Suns back in the day. He's only had five scoring shots for the year. He's had two already tonight. And he's snapping across the body, skims the goalpost. Minor scores for the Hawks peppering. They're 1 4. Port Adelaide a 1 1. It's a three point lead for the Hawks, 17 and a half minutes in. Sean Burgoyne watch. He's had an early kick in game 400. He's currently sitting on the bench. Three behinds to O'Meara to start this one. Sorry, three scoring shots. Yeah. yeah. That's been quite the start. From the kick in, it's punched it back inside, attacking 50 for the Hawks, but Burn Jones comes away with it. Nice pass to Amon, who takes it on his chest, just inside the boundary line. And just behind centre wing. Looking for Dixon over the top. He doesn't mind his chances here against Frost, who was shepherded out of it. Jath showed fantastic athleticism to get up high enough, make the first spoil, and then make sure it went out of bounds with the second. Ball to be tossed back in. In between wing and half forward here for Port Adelaide. They trail by three points. We're almost at time on in this opening quarter. Lysette, McAvoy to do battle. Lysette in front position. Shark there by Warple, who cursed as soon as that left the boot. Hit the wrong side of the ball, out of bounds on the full. Lids, did you play in BJ's 300th game? No, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I heard all about the aftermath, though. <laughs> no, half time. I was just no, 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 no. The aftermath. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Late, later, later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> couple, uh, couple of your finest hanging out with me. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Burton here just kicking the ball forward for Port Adelaide. There's a free kick on the wing. The reason I asked, Beach, I was wondering that because the hand pretzel gate, the handshakes, and the love for. Uh, for Sean Bergman before the bounce, did you cop anything like that in your milestone games? A nah. few of the opposition players? Just, just another game, mate. 
<laughs> Bergman across the ground finds a Lear. He goes short to Frederick, who unfortunately is on the ground. And I say that nothing against the Fredericks, uh, but the reason he's out there, there's an early injury, and that is Kane Farrell, who hyperextended his knee. So more on that throughout the night as Frederick goes short to lean it. Long kick straight down the pipe. Marshall got hands to it, 30 out from the port goal, no mark. Rosie trying to get a little soccer away. There's a pack forms under Frost. Umpire says, ball up. 25 metres out from the port goal at the Coventry end. They're asking a lot of questions, the Hawks, at the moment, aren't they? They're, poor Adelaide just aren't really throwing any killer blows, that's for sure. Dixon to do the ruck work, deep forward. Made it on a platter there for Boak, who tried to get out of a couple of tackles. Ball spilt free, holding the ball. Too long, the umpire said, and Warple with the free kick. About 20 metres out from his defensive goal line. They're just, yeah, struggling to find space in their forward line. It, yeah. It made mention Hawthorne's got a plus one, but it's it's more than just, you know, a, a three on two or a two v three otherwise, but um, it's almost like a six v seven. There's just not enough space, so it would create isolation or to hit a lead up. Georgiades was able to get it the way of Bono. Spins on his left inside 50. Oh, Dixon almost took the mark. Yes, did enough, according to the umpire. And he's marked it in the left forward pocket, about 40 metres out from goal. Yes, there you go. Eat my own words. It's just one of the few times there where it's come from a clearance, mind you, so actually able to set up properly. Forwards get in a more dangerous position to keep their backs accountable, but they go forward and actually get some isolation with Dixon for the first time tonight. First attempt at goal tonight for Charlie Dixon. And he comes. Kicks from 45. Is it straightening? It's across the face. One behind. And accuracy continues. 1 2 8 Port Adelaide. 1 4 10 the Hawks. They lead by two. 21 played in the opening turn. Scrimshaw short to Burgoyne, who marks the kick out. His second touch, he lays it back by hand to Scrimshaw. Oh, missed the target. Wanted to find McAvoy. Kicks it past him. Lean it, collects for Port Adelaide. Drives it top of the goal square. Hardigan back, taking the mark. Second game back for Cole Hardigan. Missed three through suspension after his a crude hit, it must be said, behind the ball on Sam Walsh back in round 10. He goes long here. Out to half back. The Ruckman's there for Port. And Lysett's over the shoulder of McAvoy. Free kick for Ben McAvoy, the two-time Premiership winning Hawk at left half back. Hawks by a couple of points. They're 1-4. Port Adelaide 1-2. Time on opening quarter. Still no flow in this one as of yet. McAvoy goes short. Mark taken by Bramble. He has Mitchell presenting short. Ignores him. Instead he goes a little longer. It's a high kick. It's going to fall short. Segler came late. Newcomb row front and centre. Back to Mitchell. Now a chance for Greaves. Missed his target, though, in Warple. Segler had to go and mop up. Warple goes for seconds. Now Greaves has another go and turns it over again. Hand pass came the way of Georgiades. Big tackle by Bramble. Great effort to lock the bigger man up. And a stoppage ensues at right half forward here for Port Adelaide. Mark in Adelaide off the SMS. Hello, team. What is the crowd estimate early on? I'll leave that one to the experts as Segler palms it down. Mitchell tackled. Ball spills over the boundary. A throw in. Probably one for Jess, I reckon. You got a number for me, Beach? 21. 21. Jess? 18. 18. Lids? 20. Maisie? 17,400. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're around that mark. From the boundary <laughs> throwing, Lysett scoops it out for Port Adelaide. Hand pass to Bergman. His handball missed the target. Howe collects for Hawthorne, kicks down the wing. And Kaczynski just moved out of position. Aaliyah takes the intercept mark. Defensive side of the wing. Hawks by two. Time on opening quarter. It's going to switch two to Jonas in the middle. Short pass to Lena. Now where is the outlet for Port Adelaide? Jonas runs around. He ignores him. Said he's going to go to left half back. Mark taken by Burton. He cops a couple of boos <laughs> there from the Hawks fans. Kicks beyond the wing. Jeez. Avon takes the mark. They will legitimately have memories like a goldfish, don't they? <laughs> Pretty much asked to leave the Hawks a few years ago. Kicked inside 50. No mark taken there. Hand pass by Drew. Comes the way of Rosie. Got out of a couple. Now the sub. Frederick gets around one and kicks a ripper. Wonderful goal by Martin Frederick. He's first in AFL football, so they come from everywhere. Nice way to get your tally started. 2-2-14. Two, two, 
The Hawks won 4-10. The margin four points. Port Adelaide with the lead after 24 minutes. Well, you're not wrong, Maisie. It's a fantastic way to kick your first goal, dodging a couple and, and slamming it home after you've come on, albeit due to a, an injury to Young Farrell. But terrific goal is set up probably by Rosie's ability to break a tackle and, and put it in front of Frederick, give him a chance. Terrific step. I thought there was a second bit of candy coming yeah, in so too. Yeah, so did I. So did I. I thought he was going to say, right, hey, you want to keep buying it, I'll keep selling it. Run all the way in. But no, good enough to bang it through from about 35. A nice finish. And Port just starting to get on top a little bit. Jess Webster on the boundary. I feel like in the last few minutes, guys, the Seagulls have just kind of invaded Docklands here at the moment. I don't know what it is about the, the stadium, but they love it here, and I'm actually fearing for my life a little bit down here, I've got to be honest. Third league, third, five, yeah. third league change of the... Evening so far, Port back in front by four. What is that? Was it? What is that phobia called? Oh, that's. that's I don't know. I've no. got it. Oh, I know that. Pass on that. I'm Do not, you? I'm I hate them. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Berg either. <laughs> four point lead for uh, Port Adelaide. We'll do another ball up in the middle. Kaczynski coming with a rush, lays a heavy tackle. And we'll do it all again. Ball up on the wing. <laughs> My old man reckons I ducked one day instead of going for the footy because one was coming at me. <laughs> <laughs> Port by four, 25 into the opening term. Ball up on the wing now. Segler hands it out to Mitchell. We're going nowhere fast. Houston lays a heavy tackle. Ball spits out, winds, collects, kicks inside 50, and Chenkoff Jaff takes the intercept mark, centre half back for Hawthorne. Jaff looking for Frost. His kick just gets there. Frost with a couple of options short. Phillips is trying to enact the switch through Jaff. He ignores that Frost. We'll go towards centre wing. Bruce tried to nudge a couple of his opponents underneath the ball. Burn Jones, hand pass to Motlop. Underground hand pass is good to Burton off one step. Kicks towards left half forward and it goes all the way back to Frost. Frost, hand pass to Mitchell, to Jad. Bit of fancy footwork. Then the hand pass back to Mitchell, who off a step, kicks beyond centre wing. McAvoy up in front, takes a strong pack mark. And now they can launch Hawthorne from the wing. McAvoy just trots back, though. And a slow play here, the Hawks. They're 1-4. Port Adelaide at 2-2. Hawks kick the first goal. Port the next couple. Three lead changes early. Goes along with the contest kick. Kaczynski and Jonas. Jonas foils down to Moore, though. His hand pass back into dispute. Socket to further afield by Burn Jones. And McAvoy takes the mark on the wing. Back where we started. City side of the ground. Oh, he's short kick. Turns it over. Coming through. Drew got a hand on it. He was able to spoil. It worked its way up. That's the ball towards Dixon. Dixon switches play, goes to Wines. Now uh, out wide to uh, Bonner on the wing. Pauses. And he's going to almost turn it over as well. Getting a fingertip to it was Warple. Couldn't do enough, though, to deflect it out of the way of Boak, who kicks inside 50. And Marshall takes the mark 45 out from goal, almost directly in front. Just that off-ball kind of run, then Warple kind of... He did a good job to get across, but he was a bit of no-man's land, so he was able to... Uh, able to allow Bonin to then to go back onto his preferred left foot, come back through the corridor after it looked like they were switching because this side of the ground, the great man Silk was in a great position, was a plus one down the line, so just need to be a bit more accountable to someone there. Walking. One behind for Marshall, kicks better on this occasion, it holds its line and Port Adelaide have three. Three, two, 20 Port. 1-4-10 the Hawks, 27 minutes played in the opening term on Grandstand AFL. Your experts, Brendan Goddard and Brett Deledio. Well, it was the work of Willem Drew coming through to actually get the spoil on the turnover, the short, attempted short kick. Fell in the lap of uh, big Charlie Dixon. If he had a wheeled and gone, Hawthorne had a plus two back there in their defensive 50. So smart ball movement. They get it out to Bonner. But he, just, he was allowed to get back inside. Warple slipped over when he was trying to spoil. And the composure of Travis Boak, we know how good he has been for a very long time. Marshall had worked back inside 50, hit up. And a beautiful finish there from the big fella. He's already had a, shot, a side on it from a bit closer. But this one, just uh, around the 50 mark, bangs it home. Beautiful. I think that's what Port needs. So they need Marshall just to step up, just to fill that role of the second take key the forward, off. take the pressure off Dixon. Yeah. Up to 15 goals for the year now for Todd Marshall. Lice it in the middle, down to Wines. Hand pass away to Amon. Gets the centre break for Port Adelaide. Kicks out to half forward and Motlop marks. A little shove from Jaff after doing so. Not 50. Jaff stands right on the 50-metre arc. Motlop pokes the pass and hits up Marshall again. He spills it. Last minute, keeps it inside the boundary line. Hand pass back to Motlop. Still half forward. Pressed up against the fence. Centering kick 
to Burn Jones. In that launch pad, 70 out, looks for Big Charlie. Just bangs into a few bodies, contesting the footy. Spills down to Newcomb. He's taken high. Free kick Hawthorne, centre-half back. They take the advantage as well. Hand pass almost came out to the wing from Bramble. Went back to Burgoyne, who had a fumble. Still maintained his feet, though, and got it back to Bramble. He tried to slam it on his boot. Not sure it hit it. Umpire says play on. Pal Pepper, hand pass to McKenzie off the side of the boot. And the juggling mark taken by Wines. He was off. Should have oh. been play on. It was late on the whistle. He didn't Should think he was going to pay the mark. Yeah, well, it didn't travel all that far either. So Wines will have the shot at goal. He'll line up from basically 50. And the kick from McKenzie came from... Oh, just outside 50. That's travelled 15. I think with the juggle, it took him a lot closer to McKenzie, and it was definitely play on. But Generous, wasn't it? Yeah, the umpire said, go back and have your kick. And this will hurt. It's the siren sounds if Wines can put it through. 45-degree angle. He'll kick from right on 50. Ollie Wines lays into it. Not going to be a score. Hooks it badly. In fact, doesn't even make the distance at all. 29 minutes that opening quarter ran for. 3 2 20 Port Adelaide, 1 4 10 the Hawks. Bruce kicked the only goal for the Hawks, the first goal of the game. And then singles for Mays, Frederick, and Marshall followed for Port Adelaide. They had five of the first seven scoring shots for Hawks, and yet it's Port Adelaide who lead it by 10 points at quarter time. It's quarter time as well at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, and it's Carlton by 22 points over Fremantle. 4 2 26 the Blues. Frio uh, four behind, so they go goalless through the opening quarter. Of course, a win for the Dockers tonight would see them dis dislodge GWS, and they would be in the top eight tonight, so all to play for for the Purple across town. Sean Burgoyne with three touches in that opening quarter in game number 400. He's Hawks 10 points behind, though. Off the SMS, just before we <laughs> reset here at quarter time, Gail in Launceston, congratulations to Sean Burgoyne on his 400th game, a true gentleman and a real champion of the game. So, Gail, appreciate your contribution and one which you boys would love. This is from Colin. Listening from South East Queensland on a scratchy Victorian AM radio, can be by the river with my dog, Kimda. Kimda, I'm pretty sure it is. Cold beers and a warm fire. Oh, that's... Sounds it's, like the best. That's your kind of evening, isn't it, Lids? Absolutely. And a bit of knowledge from someone, no name, no pack drill here, BJ, but the lights attract, attract the moths, mm -hmm. which the yep. seagulls then feed on. Yep. So that's why we have seagulls with the roof open here at Docklands tonight. It's quarter time. The thoughts on the footy of Brett Delitti on Brendan Goddard coming up next. Port by 10 points on ABC Radio, ABC Sport Digital. This is Grandstand AFL. Know the story with ABC News Digital. Get the latest breaking news with live notifications whenever you want, wherever you are. We are considering going to zero emissions. We'll go ahead as planned. And abruptly ended the case. It will help us all get back to normal and back to all the things that we love. Those are the kind of things that work. There's hope for a brighter future. ABC News, Australia's most trusted news source. Head to news.abc.net.au or download the ABC News app. The 2021 AFL Premiership season on ABC Radio and on ABC Sport Digital. Bramble, nice dummy, gets himself to centre wing, kicks inside 50, McKenzie going back with the flight, left it. Bruce diving to his left who couldn't take the mark, goes back in for seconds, was he caught? Oh yes! Kick from just inside 50, lays into it beautifully! And the man who's played the most games with Sean Burgoyne gets them off to the perfect start this evening. Port Adelaide winner, hand pass from Mays out to Dixon, shoots to the top of the goals for it, Mays. Racing back towards the goal line, the footy came in like a tracer bullet, stuck his arms up and marked just in front of his face, top of the goal square. And now an early settler for him, 15 out right in front, no problems. Hand pass by Drew, comes the way of Rosie, got out of a couple. Now the sub, Frederick gets around, what a kicks a ripper! Getting a fingertip to it was Warple, couldn't do enough though to deflect it out of the way of Boak, who kicks inside 50 and Marshall takes the mark, 45 out from goal, almost directly in front. One behind for Marshall, kicks better on this occasion, it holds its line, and Port Adelaide have three. The 2021 AFL Premiership season on ABC Radio and on ABC Sport Digital. Sounds there of the opening quarter, 400th game for Sean Burgoyne, just the fifth time in VFL-AFL history that a player has broken the 400-game barrier. 
David off the SMS. The number is 0437 774 774. John Newcomb wearing number 44, which is John Platten's old yep. number, of course. There would be very few players to have worn number 44 for Hawthorne. I've just done a quick search. So Newcomb's actually only the third guy to have worn it since Platten. A guy by the name of Cameron Stokes wore the number back in between 2008 and 2010, played 20 games. Damon Greaves wore it recently. He's had a yeah. jump and change in the offseason. He's now in number 30. And now John Newcomb in number 44, John Platten's old number for Hawthorne. Brennan Goddard and Brett Delidio are here with their take on that opening term, Port Adelaide by 10. Thanks for that useless stat, Bulls. <laughs> just, so, somebody inquired about it. I thought it would be an interesting note. John Platten was a popular footballer. Yeah, John was. Good player. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, the game. Um, well, I thought, I thought Port had the better of them, but they, as you may have mentioned a couple of times, they just didn't have too many good looks going inside 50. So um, Hawthorne are playing that plus one at all times, at all stoppages. So allowing a plus one elsewhere for Port, Port are choosing to have it up around the stoppage. So um, I haven't looked at the stats, but I assume that it felt like Port were on top around the stoppages. But when they did get it forward, there wasn't a lot of space, isolation. Not too many lead-ups um, or anything like that. So um, they managed to get a couple of uh, marks. Marshall, I think, twice. Isolation on Dixon once. But, um, yeah, just the quality inside 50s are really hurting. They got on top there. Ollie Wines had a shot just to put them, uh, you know, three in front at the end of the quarter. But it just felt like lids that, that Port had the better of them. Hawthorne just yeah. kind of holding on by the skin of their teeth. Yeah, and, and you can see the way they're defending is having that plus one behind that you've spoken about. But they've... So far, what well, had uh, 100 disposals, Port Adelaide, the 72, the Hawks, so they're dominating that. And contested possession, they're winning at first, 42, 33. Inside 50s, would you believe? 16 to 6. So every time, uh, bar one, Hawthorne have gone forward, they've actually been able to score, which yeah. is a credit to them. You know, Jake Ramirez had three shots on goal already. It just hasn't been able to capitalise. They could have, well and truly, you know, got off to a good start, uh, one goal for it. But uh, Port Adelaide probably the... Uh, the stronger team, as we probably expected coming into the game. We didn't. It's not like we didn't give Hawthorne a chance, but doing enough at the moment. I think if the game opens up a bit more, Port Adelaide can get their game going, which they've probably struggled to do over the last few weeks. You know, they can uh, really test Hawthorne out, that's for sure. And Port do set up well behind the ball, so a number of times Hawthorne had a bit of time and space to go forward, but uh, Port had created an actual plus one behind the ball. Port by 10, crooked bounce in the middle. The umpire says play on. Segler won it down towards O'Meara. Drew tackles him straight away. Eamon spinning once, twice. Evades a would-be tackler. Drives the kick deep for Port. Hand on it from Mays. Knocked away at the back. Frost got, copped an unkind bounce, as did Greaves. Wax it away off the turf. Straight to Pau Pepper. Gang tackled. Newcomb and Jaff taking to the turf. And we'll have a ball up. 40 metres out from Port's goal. Kicking to the locket end in the second term. Port Adelaide by 10 points. Tossed up, Dixon. This time, Segler won it down to O'Meara. Snaps out of the immediate danger zone. Ball took an awkward bounce. It gets through the initial pair of Hawks. And Aaliyah is able to mock, mop up. Kicks towards left half forward. The strong mark taken by Pal Pepper. He can enter inside 50 with this kick. Well, he put it to the hot spot. He does indeed. A bit of a low dart. Dixon actually ran under it in the end. Hand pass comes the way of Newcomb. Out to Jaff, who takes them on as usual. Nice to see. Got around one. Hand pass came to Segler. Kicks out of defensive 50. No mark taken. Bonner turns it over. Was pushed off the ball. Nash to O'Meara, who kicks it up to O'Brien. Just couldn't get his arms free. He had Kaczynski running past. Good tackle laid by Boke in the end. Now the hand pass comes the way of Frederick. He's looking for a way out. Across half back. It's a good kick too. Right up the middle, mark taken by Georgiades. He wants to keep it moving, lays a hand pass out wide to Burton. He's got plenty of space on that city wing. Kicks for Dixon, hits him up and marks strongly. Good catch. In front of a pressure from Sam Frost. But again, you want to see the work behind the ball that Dixon was doing there. Mm. Frost did a really good job, actually. They were semi-wrestling, but he was trying to lead, trying to move to create that space in front of him. And couldn't really get the separation. But for all young forwards, again, we've talked about it. Leeds just about wanting to you know, lead in a straight line and use the athleticism. Here's Dixon doing a number of things, forward craft, just to find that time and space on his opponent. Accuracy at 65% this year, Charlie Dixon. And that is bang on. Superb finish. He turns to the Hawthorne fans and says, how about that? 
His first of the night. And all of a sudden, Port starting to take over. They've kicked four on the bounce. Port Adelaide, 4 2 26. Hawthorne anchored on 1 4 10. Three minutes into the second term, Brett Delidio, Brennan Goddard, Grandstand AFL. Yeah, he's spot on, BG. I was watching uh, to see. So I can see that he had all that space in front of him, looking to do his work. Frosty did a really good job to be uh, right up his backside, but uh, right under Charlie, just changed his angles, got his arm into Frosty's chest, gives him half a metre, and that's all you need when you're a big guy like that. And beautiful kick, but a good catch as well. For uh, I know he's got big buckets for hands, Charlie yeah. Dixon. Once they get in there, they don't too, come out too often. But uh, sure he loves. Yeah, and a, and a nice finish out there. That'll give him a lot of confidence, knocking that one through from outside 50. 16 points the margin in favour of the power, their greatest lead of the game so far. Segler down to Shields, who goes out of midair. Frederick couldn't take the mark at ground level, though. The ball comes back towards him. He just knocks it out in time. Newcomb picks it up. He's tackled strongly by Lysette. Ball pinned to him. We'll have another stoppage inside the centre square. Amir and Boat pushing and shoving each other around this stoppage. Lysette won it down to O'Meara. Poked off the ground again that time by Shields. Only as far as Frederick. Got it to aim on. Off the right boot this time. Towards Burgoyne, who got rid of his opponent. Then took it. Got out of one tackle. Hand pass was good too to Warple, who dropped it. And a couple of fumbles. Went back to regather. Couldn't do so. Or did he, rather. He turned it over, though, with the hand pass. Now a chance for Port Adelaide. There's a bit happening off the ball here. Free kick is going to be paid the way of George Yardis, I think, for a bit of off-the-ball stuff from Warple. Frustration of turning it over there. Spilled over. Held on to his tackle on Giorgiardi's for a little bit too long. He'll uh, kick Port Adelaide inside 50. Carlton all over the Dockers at the MCG. Five minutes into the second term. Carlton by 28. The Dockers without a goal as Giorgiardi's kicks it deep but Hardigan at the drop takes the mark. Former Crow played in a number of showdowns for Adelaide of course against Port. Now in the brown and gold stripes, he goes on a bit of a run and gives it a whack out to the city wing. Two port players compete. Aaliyah in front, controls the footy over the boundary line, will have a throw in. Between wing and half forward for the power. Roof open, we think a crowd nudging towards the 20,000 mark. Sean Burgoyne's 400th game, he had three touches in the opening quarter, a couple of handballs and an early kick. Becomes just the fifth player tonight to reach that milestone. From the stoppage, hand pass over the top. And Port Adelaide can rebound from centre wing through Alia. Alia kicks long inside 50. It's a little bit of a shallow entry. Hardigan was there first for the Hawks. Hand pass to O'Meara, hand pass to Hardwick. Now to Greaves, and he has to kick outside with defensive 50. Just has enough on it to get to O'Brien. Good kick. And he can reset from right half back. 16-point lead for Port Adelaide. Five minutes into the second term. Nice kick. O'Brien back in board to Shields. Mark's defensive side of the wing for the Hawks. Long kick. Dangerous ball trying to feed it out towards Nash. Stands underneath it. Can't mark. Clever. Scooped it out the back door. Another pack forms. Lean it. The soccer's it to the advantage of Frederick. Close to the boundary line. He's happy to see it out. Martin Frederick in the game early after the hyperextension to the right leg of Kane Farrell. So, unfortunately, tapped out of the game in the opening minutes. Port Adelaide, the last four of the game here, six minutes into the second quarter, they lead by 16 points. What will be tossed back in? Segler tried to nudge Lysette out of the way. Burn Jones goes in, picks it up. He's tackled immediately. One arm pinned up by says holding the ball. Not much of an opportunity to get rid of that. Mitchell with the free kick. Seems if you pin the arm... Prior opportunity seems to, seem to go out the window. Mitchell to kick it inside 50 for the Hawks. The last goal coming at the four-minute mark of the opening term. We've played six in the second at the top of the square. No mark taken. Ball pull off the pack. Kicks. Slices it. It sneaks through for one behind. 1-5-11 the Hawks. 4-2-26 the power. We've played seven minutes in the second term. How do you see it, Beach? Yeah, Port, I think Port are kind of comfortable at the minute. Even Hawthorne don't look like threatening too much. Even though they did uh, have five shots and goal with, what, six inside 50s in the first quarter. 
They've worked down the boundary line on the city side. Houston long kick into the side, the forward 50. Rosie, the target, spills out the back. Marshall keeps his feet, knocks it away from Hardigan. Regains possession. Clever kick. Bergman hands to it. No. He got some contact. Free kick. And Bergman in the left forward pocket. Nash did everything he could. Running back with the flight. It was a superb kick. And the umpires pinged him for chopping the arms. Oh, that is a shocker. That is an absolute shocker. It wasn't for the arms, I think, because of the push. Yeah, you, he caught a push? Yeah, caught a push on him. So yeah, it must have been front-on contact, I suppose. Absolute shocker. At least he did touch him, unlike one we saw last week. <laughs> At the end of all of that, Miles Bergman will have a set shot here. He doesn't miss from 15 out, and Port are off and running. That's five straight for the pair. 5-2, 32. Hawthorne stuck on 1 5 11. All of a sudden, it's a 21 point ball game, a new game high. Eight minutes into the second term, Port Adelaide's way. Yeah, that's not great. That's the Port were able to bypass uh, you know, Hawthorne's number behind the footy. They created a 2v2 down the line that Rosie attempted to mark. But Marshall did a good job. He could have easily ran back towards goal with his opponent just to hopefully find be that next kind of link in the chain, but actually ran to the fall of the ball, which is a great decision as his man dropped off, which I think it was uh, Hardigan at the time. And they did have an outnumber there, but Bergman just uh, a little bit lucky with the call for mine, just uh, wasn't really there. He did a good job, Connor Nash, to get over and, as we see it again, his eyes were on the ball for most of it. Port, Ad Port Adelaide lead by 21. Almost another clearance coming there as lines came through strongly. Now a chance for Motlop, but left half forward. Couldn't gather. Scrimshaw did for the Hawks. Hand passes to Warple, who was running hard. Warple looking for McAvoy. Got a fair shove in the back from Aaliyah, who paused as he picked up the ball. Gave it to Burn Jones. Now to Drew back to Burn Jones. Chip over the top is good. Amon is able to take the mark. Clatters into Howe as well. Plays on. Amon gets around him. Kicks inside 50. Dixon playing from behind. Forced to spoil. Ball spills over for a boundary throw in the left forward pocket for the power. Free have got a goal at the MCG, so 10 minutes into the second quarter. Carlton 6-2, Fremantle 1-5. It's the Blues by 27 points there. So we've got the close one, 21 points. Port Adelaide's lead here, five goals to one, and a throw in deep inside forward 50 for Port. Spills to Wines, chucks it outside of the right boot. Hardigan spoils it away from Marshall. Dangerous position for the Hawks. Hardwick tries to clear Cart. Rosie passing through, taken high. Free kick for Rosie, or in fact held without it, said the umpire. And Connor Rosie receives the free, 45 out, dead in front, centre half forward. Do you think anyone that throws their head back deserves a free kick? In all seriousness, there's only, there's only one reason they're doing it, right? Is to exaggerate, like, maybe a little bit of contact. Oh, that was around his shoulder, wasn't it? But it's, I just saw the head, but in all yeah. seriousness, like, why... Sometimes you have to sell it, though, to actually... <laughs> Oh, we've, all, we've all done happen. it, but yeah. that's what I'm saying. There's only one reason why we do it and someone else does it. So Rosie kicks from right on the red paint for the 50-metre arc and misses out of the left. Oh. So you got a bump after dumping the kick as well from Tom Mitchell, and he went to ground on that as well. So Connor Rosie. But I think he's actually on, he's, he's leaning over to get his mouth gut out of his sock and Mitchell came out and bumped him. I don't, oh. what's, what's the reason oh, that? I think they paid the free kick here, Beach. You won't be happy with this. No, no, but watch this. Oh, it's going to be a goal score free, a so, goal square free kick. So he went to grab the mouth guard back out of his sock. Rosie went down after the bump from Mitchell. And now after the behind, a free will be paid. Dixon gets the top of the goal square. That's a no-doubter. Wax it up into the second deck. And all of a sudden, Port Adelaide have kicked six in a row. 6-2-38. Hawthorne 1-5-11. Plenty of intervention from the umpires. And 11 and a half minutes into the second term, this game-high lead for Port continues to grow. It's at the 28 points. Yeah, not sure what... I've, I've got my own thoughts on it. I'd like to get Beejas, but I've just never seen the point in that sort of stuff. It's like the head rubs after a free kick's given or someone misses and you tap him and you say, well, uh, yeah, you missed. Especially when, he's, rubbish. especially when he's vulnerable. Well, I, I don't think if Rosie even wanted to stand up, he couldn't have. So he goes down, he goes his mouth guard of Mitchell's. Yeah. So, yeah, look, I don't necessarily think it's a free kick, but I know they're trying to stamp it out because then... It's almost like the taunting rule in the NFL that, that that leads to other things, and so free kick for stupidity. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah the point, so the point counts. 
Pardon? Yeah. Yes, point, the counts point counts and the goal. Top of the goal square. What an absolute gift. The old seven-point play. Margin now 28 points in favour of the power. From the middle, Burn jones across half-back. Hand passes to Wines. Wines kicks over Rosie. He's already getting boost. He might have been put down afterwards as well. So Rosie's going to get the down-the-field free kick here. He wants to play all quickly. He has to go behind the man on the mark. So Burn jones it was who went down in back play. Bit of a late hit on him. Rosie kicks back in board to McKenzie. Things just getting a little spicy at the moment between these two teams. McKenzie looking for a short option. Burn jones is there, has to reach and stretch to take it. He'll kick from true centre-half back. Burn jones he goes short to Motlop. It wasn't 15. Centre-half back for Port. Spins away, goes short again to Amon. Looked like he kicked at the same distance as the ball that was kicked to him, but that's paid. These two teams played a big-time final against each other back in 2014. Fair bit of turnover since then. Just four Hawthorne players tonight were part of that 22 and just three from Port Adelaide. Of course, the Hawks winning that prelim by just three points. It's a good game, that one. As Jonas takes the mark, goes short to Amon. Amon long towards Georgiani. He's got a real leap up. Can't mark, spills down to Frost, collects, takes on the tack like four. Oh. Didn't dispose of it. He's been pinned holding the ball. And Pow Pepper to be rewarded. He did dispose of it. They're not happy with this, Hawthorne. I feel like the rub of the green going against them. The free kick to Pow Pepper from 55 out. He feints to shoot and then kicks for Lice at the pocket. Clever from Pow Pepper. Loaded up as if he was going long right to the goal line from downtown and instead just checked the kick into the pocket and Lice had a weight to it. It was, was actually really, really clever, wasn't it? Yeah. Really clever. I liked it. These Hawks fans are really stirring up the Seagulls. Every time they start get, carrying on, the Seagulls get involved. The uh, Seagulls are scared of Hawks, aren't they? Yeah. So they shouldn't even be here. Lice it to snap from the left forward pocket. Oh. He clips the post. That's a superb kick on the run last week to seal the game against the Swans. A minor here. That's one way traffic. Port Adelaide 6 4, Hawthorne 1 5. 29 point lead for Port, 15 minutes played in the second term. And led by 10 points at quarter time. As Corbin said, that lead now 29. Hardwick from the kick in, runs to about 30 out from his defensive goal line, goes long. McAvoy takes the mark. Had a bit of a trip. Oh, I thought the umpire was going to get sucked in there and pay 50. <laughs> Instead, he was telling Lightset to come back a few metres. Hard done by the Hawks. <laughs> Short by McAvoy. He finds O'Meara. Just in front of the interchange benches in front of us. O'Meara. Bereft of options. Short, so he's going to have to go long. He kicks inside 50. Shallow entry. Shields front and centre. He's ripped to the ground. Good strong tackle. Ball up right at the top of 50. So what old mate from the Texas is telling us is to, if, to get rid of the Seagulls then we must get rid of the moths. Yep. Here's McAvoy down to O'Meara. Hurried kick forward. Wanted Kaczynski. McKenzie gets rid of him. No free kick. Back pocket. Aaliyah collects for Port. Hurry ball out the halfback. Unkind bounce for Georgiades. Frost onto it. Frost a little fumble. Spills to Wines. Frost tackles him. Nice follow-up. Up lets them go. O'Meara collects. He's tackled, taken to ground. And now a ball up. 55 out from the Hawthorne goal. I think at the MCG and a few other grounds, they actually have the fake hawk. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think they've been proven that they don't really work. But <laughs> And then they've got their wires at the MCG. That's right. I don't think they work either. Clearance for Mitchell here. High kick inside 50 off his right boot. Oh, good mark taken as everyone fell around him. McKenzie stood tall. Do you know what does work is the actual eagle over in Perth. At Aussie the eagle mm -hmm. flies around before the game. Come on, the eagle's on standby here tonight. <laughs> Burn jones receives the ball, kicks to Alia. Still inside defensive 50, short pass to Motlop. He's called to play on, kicks off one step and finds Drew. Still inside defensive 50. So Motlop's finding it. He's a half forward, but he's actually finding himself a long way up the ground. And his direct opponent, Hardwick, for most of the time, is sitting behind the ball as a plus one. Drew kicks to centre wing. Good contest by Dixon. Couldn't take the mark. Hardigan at ground level. Hand pass wasn't great for Phillips. And then Bonner's smashed over for a boundary throw-in. Tumbles over the boundary line with the ball. Nice contest from Hardwick there. And a ball in right on centre wing. 
Shout out to Grant in Waterloo who's listening and sent a text message through. Wanted to congratulate Sean Burgoyne, of course, on his 400th. Three early touches. It's been a little quiet since Sean Burgoyne after a beautiful opening and introduction with a guard of honour, a number of players that he's played alongside and against throughout his career. From the boundary throwing, Port Adelaide win it through Bonner. Kick heads down to half forward and it's thumped out of play. And by Scrimshaw will have a boundary throw in left half forward for Port. Now the other game tonight is the Melbourne Cricket Ground. This game had four different venues during the week. Started in Perth, was meant to be in Launceston, then was going to be at Caninia Park and ended up at the MCG. Carlton by 26 over Fremantle. That's 18 minutes into the second term. Lysette knocks it down only as far as Phillips. Hand pass to Segler, who kicks off one step up towards the wing. Nicely gathered by Kaczynski. Got it to O'Brien. His kick was almost smothered. Just squeezed it up towards right half forward. Bruce with nice forward pressure. Warriors put it out of it and then slipped. Fell over. Boundary throw in. Inside attacking 50 for the Hawks. So they can set up here in the forward line, Hawthorne. They've enjoyed a better couple of minutes. Elite 29 points in favour of the power at the moment. 18 minutes played second term on Grandstand AFL. Toss back into play. O'Brien missed it. Drew. Hand pass for Bonner under pressure. And hand pass to Boak, who had a couple of hawks clinging to him almost before he got the ball. Ball locked up at the top of 50. Let's head downstairs, Jess Webster. Just watching Sean Bergen on the bench, and he was actually signalling to Jaff to come off for a rotation, and Jaff said, no, not yet, sorry, I'm just going to stay out here. It's a bit stiff, isn't it, in your 400th? <laughs> From the ball up, Frederick across the half-back line, a couple of bounces for Port, runs away with it, and then just kicks in height. There's no one there. Scrimshaw takes the intercept mark. Inside the centre square, power by 29, 19 played. Second quarter, Scrimshaw goes wide. And up to Hardwick. Early sub made for Port, unfortunately. Uh, the hyperextension, the leg of Kane Farrell tapped out of the game. Long kick inside the forward 50. Segler flew. Cart marks. Bills down to Jonas. Hand pass to Drew. He lost it. Shields at centre half forward. Hand pass to Newcomb. Hurried kick. Didn't go anywhere, but straight up in the air. How comes down with it. Still at half forward for the Hawks. Hands it to Bruce. Hand pass to Newcomb. Hand pass out wide. Wanted more. Frederick does well. Close to the boundary line. Gives it to Bonner. Newcomb tackles him out of play and will have a throw in. Forward pocket for the Hawks. A rare entry in this second term, which is now 20 minutes old. 29 point lead for Paul. Kicked it that hard, you can be kicked it backwards, which was a fair effort. The wrong side of the ball. Toss back into play. O'Brien just grabs it out of the ruck. He was looking for the runner in Bruce to became the tackler. Shields it was rather. Good tackle as well. He locks Jonas up, still inside attacking 50 for Hawthorne. Just can't find a decisive break in play here at the moment, the Hawks. Lysette over the top. Burton. Has it ripped away from him? Newcomb's in there for the Hawks. He becomes the tackler. Now the ball spills free. O'Meara, Bruce trying to weave a path through. And he's paid holding the ball. Fairly hot on the whistles tonight. The umps aim on with the free kick for Port Adelaide. Might have been watching the game in the twilight, that Adelaide-Brisbane game, where we barely saw it yeah. holding the ball to the entire game. The rules back tonight. As Jonas marks the kick in the back pocket. Time on second term, 29 points, the power's lead. Jonas long ball down the line and Segler whacks it out of play. The boundary throw in 70 metres out from Hawthorne's goal. Last time we saw the Hawks here at Docklands this year, they were actually belted that night, round seven against the Saints, a 69 point loss. A much improved team from there, having won two of their last three and Burgoyne back on the ground, the cheers which you would have picked up in the effects, Mike, for the boundary throw in. Segler whacks it back towards the boundary line, and Amon sees it over. What are your thoughts, Liz? Bit of a stalemate at the moment. You know, Corbs, I was actually just watching a uh, big flock of seagulls out there. I thought they must have found some fish. <laughs> <laughs> Got the fish and chips. <laughs> they found something. There's a big flock of them. Thrown back into play. Segler just whacks it forward inside 50. Jonas had a fumble as he was coming at the ball. O'Brien becomes the tackle on Frederick. Gets him to ground. Slams him into the turf and we'll have a ball up. Again, inside attacking 50 here for Hawthorne. They're enjoying plenty of time forward of centre here, the Hawks, but they haven't been able to craft much from it. O'Brien down to Bruce. Was he having an arm held? No. Winds with the clearance up towards the wing. Hawks with the numbers. Hardwick fires out the hand pass to Frost, who checks the kick. 
Howe tried to get a run at it. O'Brien came late, didn't take the ball. Now mopping up for Port Adelaide was Frederick to Bonner. Turns onto his left boot. Kicks up towards Mays. He spilt it. Now a chance. Greaves to Frost by hand to Hardwick. Hardwick with a low spearing ball looking for Howe. Who protected the fall of the ball well. But couldn't quite grab it. And Amon runs off. I don't know whether his other boot is, where his other boot is. He's I was just wondering the same thing. Has someone got it yep. down here on the boundary? I think he it's threw already... it over the boundary line. He couldn't get his shoelace done up, so he said, I'll just run with one boot for the <laughs> time being, and the trainer comes with it from the right forward pocket. Boundary throw in, Lysett. Tried to grab it out of the ruck, spills it. Passing through. Burton hurried, kick forward to a one-on-one. Pow Pepper and Greaves. Pow Pepper collects. Greaves tackles him. Hand pass back into dispute. Newcomb got it out to Jager. Takes on one, takes on two. Caught the third time. Gang tackled. Wines and Lysett got him. Holding the ball and free kick for Port on the wing. And three early looks. Jager O'Meara, three behinds. 23 and a half minutes into the second term. It's a 29-point lead for Port Adelaide. Freo have settled a little at the MCG. Time on in the second term there. Carlton by 18 now. After leading by a big margin early. The switch is on for Port Adelaide as lean it short to Motlop. Motlop short again to Jonas. Mark's defensive side of the wing. Jeez. How's this last 10 minutes of footy? Bit of a hard watch, Bench. Hasn't they haven't done anything. <laughs> <laughs> back to lean at centre half back comes all the way out to left half back and Riley Bonner in the long sleeves marks. Oh, that's Don't a you shocking dare. kick as well from him. He had Lysett who would have who, he didn't have a player within 30 metres of him. He's missed him. Out of bounds, the ball spills. Lysett couldn't get there. You'd that just about it. sums up the last 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, you'd excuse that if that was his opposite, but I think that's his preferred, yep. unfortunately. So, mm. as you said, Maisie sums it up. Toss back into play on the wing. Lysett, both ruckmen go to ground rather clumsily. Now at ground level, O'Meara over the top, ball spilt free. Mays kicks inside, attacking 50 for Port Adelaide, which has been a rarity of the last 10 minutes. Socket away by Hardigan from the initial contest. Now he's got to chase after it. Georgiades gets there before anyone else. Turns back inside, kicks. Bergman marks. No, he doesn't. Dropped it at the last moment. Gathers. Goes the outside of the boot. What an effort. Thank you. Bergman. Mopped up his own mess, kicks his second on the outside of his boot from 40. Well, that was very strange. 7 4 46 the power, 1 5 11 the Hawks. They haven't been inside 50 for a long time, the power, and go bang. 25 minutes played, second term on Grandstand AFL. Oh, gee, they've had a lot of footy. It's just been played between the arcs, a lot of junk footy, switching, going nowhere. The plus 50 on disposals now, Port yeah, Adelaide. Yeah, just. Crazy number there. Inside 50s would be, I think, a lot more than Hawthorne too. Yeah, 26 to 12 in favour of Port. Yeah, the foot of the last 12 minutes has, has been really poor. Just no one willing to take a risk. Mind you, they're, they're set up pretty well, but no one's really yeah, taking the risk to try and get through there and unsettle the, the defence. And Hawthorne have that plus one. So Port number of times look up, oh, I can't kick it there, we can't go fast because there's a plus one behind the ball. We'll go and man him up so you have the confidence to go forward, mix it up a bit because you are dominating the game. You're not getting any reward for your dominance. First time in his short career, multiple goals in the same game for Miles Bergman. Back in the middle, Rosie to Wines, away to Boak. Hits the clearance out towards right half forward for Port. Motlock clever, taps it down to Georgiati's advantage. Sweeping hand pass to Mays. Heavy tackle by Scrimshaw. He's dispossessed. Frost picks it up for the Hawks. Hand pass to Warple, to Bramble. Away by hand to Segler. His hand pass a little loose. Frost just tried to soccer it away. Back into dispute. Jaff jumps on top of it. He's wrapped up. Pack forms around him. Umpire says, ball up. 60 out from Port's goal, right half forward. What was that? He's been watching the Euros. <laughs> oh, just, <laughs> just, just bend down. You've got two hands, champ. Kick from the clearance, inside attacking 50. <laughs> Foss drops it. <laughs> Going back with the flight. Now a chance inboard. Hardigan just takes the kick off it and then finds Mitchell. And finally we get... A little bit of free play here for the Hawks at left half back. 35 point lead for Port Adelaide. They've kicked the last seven in the game. Long ball to a contest on the wing. Uh, spills down in front of McKenzie. Bruce collects. He's taken high. Free kick for the Hawks. You can hear by the Bronx cheer. They feel they've been a little hard done by it. 
Sean Burgoyne's 400th, just the three touches so far for Sean. Bruce goes long, deep inside the forward 50 off hands. It spills to Burton. Goes back by hand to Bonner for Port Adelaide. High clearing kick out to halfback. Off hand slips down to Marshall. Hand pass to Wines to Drew. Handball on to Houston. He kicks to the wing and Mays takes the mark on the logo City wing. He's got one player ahead of him who's rosy. Bounces on its point. He keeps it in play. Boundary line would have almost been a win. Segler's there. He's happy to see it over. And the boundary line does win out. Right half forward here for Port Adelaide. They don't like him, do they, Maisie? The old Hawks supporters? Mm. No. Not happy with a couple of his efforts earlier in this quarter. Ball will be thrown back into play. 60 around from the Port Adelaide goal. Margin currently 35 points. Both Ruckman couldn't reach it. Drew over the top. Mace came through the stoppage. Hand pass to Houston. Fires inside 50. Georgiades. There's a free kick earlier in that contest. And Marshall is going to receive it. He was the, uh, the second pairing in that contest. So... Obviously an early hold, and Marshall where receives the free kick, 15 out, slight angle to the right. You see that one, gents? Just waiting to see the replay, because I didn't see it initially. But yeah. There wasn't a uh, a response from the Hawthorne crowd, was there? So maybe it was legit, because we would have heard about it if it wasn't what well, they, thought, they thought it wasn't. In comes Marshall. One in the first quarter. Has he got one in the second? He does. Marshall kicks his second of the game, 28 minutes played, second term on Grandstand AFL, 8-4-52, the power. They are motoring away now from the Hawks, 1-5-11, who've only kicked one behind in this second term. No, we're still waiting for it to see what actually happened. Oh, Hardigan thought he was hard done by, didn't he? He didn't really want to, uh, well, he wanted to remonstrate, but no one else really uh, saw too much in it. Hard to know. Looked like just a contest forward of the footy. Yeah, still can't see a lot in it, Beach, to be honest with you. I think it was just one that uh, Marshall was saying, yep, thank you very much. I'll take that and kick me second. Keep the, the boys rolling. Oh, he's, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. They're both... Harding's just got the hand across the, the stomach and... Marshall's holding onto his Marshall's arm. Marshall's actually holding onto his arm. Stiff. So two for Marshall, two for Bergman, two for Dixon, the multiple goal kickers, and Port with eight in a row. They get the centre break again here. Willem Drew, high ball out to half forward. Hardigan whacks it away from Marshall, straight down into the lap of Rosie. He snaps on the run and misses. And the Hawthorne fans still having a bit of fun with Connor Rosie after it. They believe he may have just put a little bit of mayo trying to draw a free kick in the earlier in this quarter, in fact. Now he's playing the role of the... The villain tonight. Yeah, he, he, he would have given it to the crowd if he had to kick that too. He's <laughs> running towards the boundary. Eight, no. eight five to one five seven goal lead for Port. Here's a moment as Greaves kicks to Burgoyne. Fair to say the round of applause is not quite as raucous as it was with his first possession. He hugs the boundary line with his kick. Segler's there. Was it out of bounds on the full? Yes, it was from Silk. Don't see that too often. We've seen some unusual things tonight. Well, there with the free kick in front of the interchange benches. Kicks to left half forward. Both the leading target. Jath over the top. In fact, it was Mays. And Jath able to get the fist to it clearly. Forces the boundary line throw in. 55 from Port Adelaide's goal. I think I've robbed him of one, two, Sean Bergwijn. He's up to five disposals now. So two kicks and three handballs and a mark. His 400th game coming on and off the ground. Started on as part of that back six. The boundary throw in, uh, hurried kick forward, winds and back with the flight is Burgoyne, who takes the mark right on cue. And he finishes with the footy right on the half time siren. That's not the half of footy he would have wanted in his 400th game. Hawthorne kicked the first goal of the night, and that was four minutes in. They haven't got one since. Port Adelaide, 8 5 53. Hawthorne, 1 5 11. It's a 42-point margin at halftime. Port Adelaide have kicked eight unanswered goals. The goal kickers, two each for Marshall, Bergman and Dixon. One to Mays, one to Frederick. His first in AFL footy. He's the Medi sub. He's come on for Kane Farrell, who hyperextended his really right knee or right leg in that opening quarter. Had to limp from the ground inside the first 10 minutes of play. So, unfortunately, Farrell out, Frederick in. 
Hawthorne have one goal kicker. That was Luke Bruce in the first five minutes. Ollie Hanrahan is the unused Medi sub at this stage. Meanwhile, it's half time at the Melbourne Cricket Ground as well. And if I knew any Carlton supporters sort of spitting, sitting within arm's length of me, they may be a little bit worried after a positive start from the Blues. They kicked four unanswered goals in the opening quarter. They let it large early, and yet their lead is just 12 at half time. So Carlton leading the Dockers at the MCG across town. It's Carlton 7 2. Fremantle 4-8. That match happening concurrently. The Dockers and the Blues. Here it's Port by 42 points. We've got Brendan Goddard and Brett Delidio with you on Grandstand AFL. Yeah, well, that was a hard, uh, hard patch of footy there to watch. Um, I think completely dominated by Port, but again, a bit misleading too because I've fumbling stuff around the ball through the midfield, not really taking it forward. But I think the thing that stands out for me, Hawthorne continually are going with this plus one behind the ball. Which obviously a plan coming in, and we haven't, I haven't seen enough of them uh, in the last few weeks to see if they've been doing this, which has been working for them, obviously keeping them in games. But for mine, it's just not working in the minute. So you, not often do you say, where's the coach's move when we're talking about Hawthorne, Alistair Clarkson, just to change it up a bit to try and get them back in the game. Because I think it's changed a little bit in that second quarter because the Ports plus one then wasn't at the stoppage. I think Hawthorne were rolling up a half forward, equaling the numbers at the stoppage and then allowing Port to have the plus one then behind the footy or in their forward 50. So, um, But then when Port looked up, they were a little bit reluctant to go forward. So they've, you know, but they're, again, not, they weren't, either team weren't taking huge risks to try and break that yeah. line, get the overlap run, get a bit of speed into the game. They were almost happy to just go off the mark, play the kick mark, but again, weren't going anywhere, kicking sideways. So where's, where's, the, where's the bravery, where's the courage from either team, particularly Port, because they've got the upper hand, they've got most of the footy. You know, they'd have confidence um, with the ball based on the scoreboard so they can take a, a few more risks, but we're not seeing anything like that. And being, a, I think, a forward for Port, having so much footy up the ground, I'd be going, lads, give us a chance to you know, get a bit of isolation or get it in quick so we can um, hopefully find some space or, or little space they do have, but they're, they're not giving their forwards a chance and getting it in quick enough. Well, you said that they've uh, had a little bit more of the footy. They're, they're plus 60 uh, in disposals. I think, don't think it helps when you've got... They've already started with a plus one and Motlop's cruising up as well. Yeah. So he's getting high. So they're essentially plus two. But um, the only thing the Hawks are winning at the moment on the stats sheet is the, the tackles. They're plus seven, which is um, one positive you can take into halftime. <laughs> not many. No, uh, not many. But it's only, like it's a low tackling game. Obviously, it's a bit of keepings off, 38 to 31 in that sense. But it's a... A domination in that uh, across the board in terms of holding on to the footy, but it's uh, Hawthorne are doing enough to put enough pressure on in there in like when it eventually does go inside fifty because they're bomb kicking, but it's coming straight back and then they're not good enough forward to the footy to actually hold on to it or make any clean moves as you've spoken about. So, someone, so, uh, some te- one of the teams, it is probably going to be Hawthorne that actually because they need to get back in the game, but they need to take more risks. So, I think Hawthorne come out in the third quarter and you know. Start Let, playing on. Start and playing on, take more risk, look through the corridor. Yeah, create a little bit more of that overlap run from the back half just to give it, you know, the little handball from a kick mark just to create that. Um, it'll get speed in the game then to break that line of defence where Port now have a plus one behind the ball because Hawthorne initiating, that's what it looks like. So um, they're almost just playing the game in a sense, the strategic game um, or tactical game. So, you know, they need to get a bit more speed. So it'll be Hawthorne coming out to take the risk, but then off the back of them, that... You take the risk, then potentially, you know, to get back in the game. Therefore, you open yourselves up to, you know, being scored against if it doesn't go that well. So, yeah. hopefully, we see something of the like because we need something in this game because that second quarter was just about as boring a quarter we've had uh, this year or game we've done this year. Uh, fourth goalless quarter for Hawthorne this season. Their other three all came in the opening quarters of games. Uh, and Port Adelaide are a perfect 22 and zip when leading. At halftime, going back last season and this year, and with a seven-goal lead at halftime, something dramatic would have to happen in the second half. Off the SMS, Shane sitting by a fire in Canman 2 in South Australia. Congratulations, Sean. You're a superstar. Go to power. Uh, James of Q, a mad, mad Hawks fan, says, good call so far, team. Hawthorne need to win this game for Silk. Not every day you get to 400 games. And the Hawks are flapping in the breeze tonight. From Bill, let us know where you're listening. What you're up to tonight... We're in a different box given the COVID restrictions or easing of restrictions. So we're in a 
what is usually a corporate suite. I feel like Lib's just a nice little fire pit. Would probably oh, do mate, well how for good us. a fire pit be? It's right. freezing. Coming right. Why don't we get chucked out? Right. Everyone else is in their usual box. Because the other broadcasters generally usually have either a caller and two experts or sort of two callers and one expert. But to keep our whole crew together, two uh, callers, two experts, we needed a room that was a little bigger. So... So we can all be here. Now, Tech, of course, Jules doing a great job, and Jess Webster on the boundary when she comes up. So keeps us all in the one room. Nice, luxurious suite. Uh, it is half time. A 12 point lead for Carlton over Fremantle at the MCG. And here it's Port Adelaide by 42 over the Hawks. Let us know where you're listening. 0437 774 774. There were two games played earlier today. It was a win for the Brisbane Lions in. Adelaide, they won by 52 points. Zach Bailey, 26 touches and kicked three. Three goals for Charlie Cameron and Link McCarthy kicked four for the Lions. While in the earlier game, the afternoon slot at the MCG, the Giants by nine points over Melbourne. Toby Green with three goals despite Michael Hibbert keeping him to just seven touches. The Giants are in the eight as it stands at the moment. Fremantle can try and take that place from them if uh, they can pull off a big second half against the Blues. We'll keep you updated throughout the night. Round 16 of the AFL Premiership season. Port by 42 at halftime. What's going on in the ABC newsroom? ABC News with Satyam Weinstein. New South Wales health authorities are denying Sydney's COVID-19 lockdown is half-hearted. The state recorded 35 new cases with nine of those out and about in the community while infectious. Chief Health Officer Dr Kerry Chant says she's been impressed to see people wearing masks and keeping their distance from others. It isn't a half-hearted lockdown. We are seeing the impact and the flattening, but we've had bumps because what's happened is we've had um, some super spreading events. More recently, we've picked up some people that have been infectious in the community for quite a while. And so hence my key message, go and get tested. Meanwhile, a service New South Wales office in southeastern Sydney is among the latest in the list of close contact exposure sites. The health department says anyone who attended the Botany office on Monday, Wednesday or Thursday between 8 and 5 p.m. should immediately get tested and isolate for a fortnight regardless of the result. The close contact exposure site list also includes a pharmacy and chemist warehouse at 5 Dock on Tuesday and in Woolworths, Mortdale on Wednesday evening. Queensland's Premier is urging unvaccinated vulnerable Queenslanders to limit their movements over the next two weeks to help protect against contracting COVID-19. The state government says the extended lockdown for Brisbane and Moreton Bay is ended. That comes after five new locally acquired COVID-19 cases. Anastasia Palaszczuk says anyone over the age of 70 and unvaccinated should avoid spending time in the community over the next fortnight. Please limit your going out. Close family is fine, but please limit and think about, you know, whether or not you need to go to a shopping centre, whether friends or family can drop some food over to you, because we do know there is virus out there. WA Premier Mark McGowan is urging Western Australians to get vaccinated to avoid future COVID-19 outbreaks. The state recorded no new community cases with nearly 9,000 people tested yesterday. The five positive cases linked to a cluster in Perth's northern suburbs remain in self-quarantine with 96% of close contacts testing negative. While Perth and the Peel region have emerged from their four-day lockdown, Mr McGowan is warning future lockdowns are possible if vaccination rates don't increase. The key way out of this is for people to get vaccinated as soon as they possibly can. Uh, that's why I want us to release as much Pfizer as we can, make sure people over 60 get access to Pfizer. It's very, very important to ensure uh, that we can find our way through and out of this. Victorian health officials say it's an important week ahead as they consider whether to ease the state's COVID-19 restrictions. Yesterday, a plan to increase capacity limits at stadiums and theatres did not go ahead due to the outbreaks across the country. Other rules, including mandatory masks indoors and caps on gatherings, are expected to be in place until at least Thursday. COVID testing commander in Victoria, Jerome Weimar, says the next few days will be critical. That partly depends on what's happening here in Victoria and the and how we're progressing. Obviously, seeing no cases for three days is a really good sign, but also it'll depend on what's happening interstate. We'll manage that balance appropriately, but it's an important week ahead of us. We really want to get to the end of these outbreaks and to, uh, to support our interstate colleagues in getting their outbreaks under control. 
Health authorities in South Africa have approved China's Sinovac COVID-19 vaccine for domestic use. The approval comes as South Africa faces a crippling third wave of infections that's paralysed hospitals and taken its death toll beyond 60,000. The health minister in South Africa has thanked the country's regulatory agency for its sense of urgency in the approval process. Brazil's Prosecutor General is requesting authorization from the Supreme Court to investigate President Jair Bolsonaro for failing to act on allegations of corruption in the purchase of coronavirus vaccines from India. The BBC's Orla Girin reports from Sao Paulo. With Brazil's death toll soaring, President Jair Bolsonaro is losing support and facing growing pressure on the streets, at a Senate inquiry, and now potentially in the courts. He's been accused of turning a blind eye to irregularities and massive overcharging in a contract to acquire a COVID vaccine from India. A whistleblower in Brazil's health ministry and his lawmaker brother claimed to have personally warned the president he has denied any knowledge and any wrongdoing. ABC News. ABC Sport on Social is your sports conversation on the go. Video, player insight and analysis. This is the content you never knew you needed. Get ABC Sport wherever you scroll. Conversations. You go into a psychiatric hospital. Spend an hour in the life of someone else. Because you can no longer function. Someone who's seen and done remarkable things. Who are all these crazy people? And it takes a while to realise you're one of them. Just because people are not completely sane doesn't mean they can't help you. Hear the latest conversations weekday mornings from 11 on ABC Radio and follow on the ABC Listen app or wherever you get your podcasts. The 2021 AFL Premiership season on ABC Radio and on ABC Sport Digital. Burton has got plenty of space in that city wing. Kicks for Dixon, hits him up and marks strongly. Accuracy at 65% this year, Charlie Dixon, and that is bang on. Superb finish. She turns to the Hawthorne fans and says, how about that? Miles Bergman will have a set shot here. He doesn't miss from 15 out and Port are off and running. So Rosie kicks from right on the red paint for the 50-metre arc and misses out of the left. Oh. So you got a bump after from Tom Mitchell, and he went to ground on that as well. After the behind, a free will be paid. Dixon gets the top of the goal square. That's a no-doubter. Wacks it up into the second deck, and all of a sudden, Port Adelaide have kicked six in a row. Georgiani gets there before anyone else. Turns back inside, kicks. Bergman marks. No, he doesn't. Dropped it at the last moment. Gathers. Goes the outside of the boot. What an effort. Thank you. In comes Marshall. One in the first quarter. Has he got one in the second? He does. The 2021 AFL Premiership season on ABC Radio and on ABC Sport Digital. The sounds there of the second quarter on Grandstand AFL. Port Adelaide have kicked the last eight in the game. So 8-5-53. They lead Hawthorne 1-5-11 in Sean Burgoyne's 400th game. He's had the five touches to half time. They kick the opening goal inside the first five minutes. But unfortunately... For Sean and Hawthorne fans, it's been all Port Adelaide from that point on. There are a couple of other games played earlier today. A nine-point win for GWS over Melbourne. This is Grandstand AFL, by the way, on ABC Radio and ABC Sport Digital. I'm Colby Middlemass alongside Andrew Mays, Brett Delidio, Brennan Goddard and Jess Webster. Uh, 42 points the margin here. I've done this all out of order. Port Adelaide leading Hawthorne. 12-point lead for Carlton over Fremantle. Halftime there as well at the MCG. Games earlier today, a nine-point win for the Giants. Lids over Melbourne. Yep. Uh, that's a big win. G-men. Yeah, mate, it was. Actually, after last week, I wasn't sure, but you know, I've written them off all year. Sorry, I haven't written them off, but I haven't been on them to make the uh, the top eight. But I'm slowly starting to see, especially with my other old mob, starting to uh, flail a little bit as well. So I hope they can keep winning. And their draw's not too bad going to the back end of the year. So they're every chance. Uh, three goals for Toby Green today, and yet had the matchup with Michael Hibbard, kept the seven touches. Yeah, not, not his uh, usual input in terms of touching of the footy, but uh, ever dangerous. Toby uh, made the most of them, which is good. And Stephen Cornelio playing currently, I think, uh, for the Giants back from injury. So he won't be too far away next week, I would have thought, if he's um, 
get this one under the belt and straight back in. I've seen David King and other media figures out there trying to claim Zach Bailey, and I'm old enough, Lids, to remember <laughs> back in the day that you were on the Zach Bailey band. Uh, one of the boys. Early. You look after him, do you? Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't count. <laughs> 26 and 3 today for Zach Bailey. A 52 point win for the Lions over Garn the Crows at Adelaide Oval. Four for Luke McCarthy, three for Charlie Cameron. Negotiate his next contract. <laughs> yeah. Brett B. Deledio. Oh, David King is helping. Keep it up, Kingy. He'd it, be in the top 100 in that list that's about to come out. Oh, yes. In the Herald yes. Sun. Uh, not yet. He's just resigned. He's getting you. Oh, has he? Oh, stiff. Yeah, he's for three years. He's hold off, hold off. Spoilers. Just on Keneally. I'll. Did you get a bit of a chuckle when his name was brought up about needing a fresh start? Like, yeah. <laughs> who is... Like, the people with these opinions, who, who are you to say that he needs a fresh start? Like, do you know what I mean? Why, why even comment on or make comments like that? I, I just find it staggering. That, yeah. He's one year into a seven-year seven deal. Seven-year deal, captain. Just gone captain in a hub um, with an abnormal year as you're ever going to have. Oh, and, and obviously struggling for four, like, but he, why would you trade him at his lowest point? So then, if, even if you were wanting to get rid of him, his stocks have never been lower. But and even for him, it, it's like it, there's no substance to that, like opinion or remark, right? Because it's, it's a clickbait. How do you how do you know how do you know what a guy's feeling and and doing and all those kind of things? So it's just I, I just I just I don't know. I just find it staggering that, that be, not only him there's. I think there's a number of guys thrown it, wasn't it? I'll just gloss over that a lot of that uh, like you said, clickbait headline stuff. <laughs> but uh, I just I just I just shook my head at it. Are you playing a game of footy this year at BJ no. level? You're done now. No, nah, done. I was meant to, but um, the body's not quite up to it. <laughs> no work put in. Yeah, yeah. what that's saying. His old team's <laughs> flying nah, too since he left. Tried last to, year. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's how built the culture there. Just oh. won, the, <laughs> won the flag in B grade, set some standards. Yeah, you no, know, the old Corfu Grammarian, Simon Williams, big punchy, coach of the year in A grade amateurs at the minute. Yeah. Got to be, but uh, knocked off two of the top teams, reigning premiers last week in Uni Blues. Full of AFL, ex AFL listed players, couldn't get the job Look at done against the Grammarians. Eight in a row. Eight in a row. First year in A grade in. 35 years and they're sitting like third on the ladder or something. Jeez. Off the back of you. And your uh, yeah, that's right. Standards. Culture, standards, standards. Lids, you've already played a couple of games this year. I hear very reliably informed from our gun producer, Roger Aldridge, yeah. who sent me this following message that this very next event, which I'm about to read, happened against the team that Lids is about to play his next game against. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a team by the name of Telegarupna. Telegarupna, yeah. In the Kyberan District Football League. Yep. Former Fremantle player Josh Mellington has booted an unthinkable 27 goals wow. <laughs> in a local country football match to bring up 100 majors for the season in just nine games. <laughs> Through the mass. 27 today for Violet Town, who won by 219 points. Yep. 36... <laughs> 36-15 to 3-1. He's, he's not happy with this, you bringing this up. <laughs> you, when are you playing next week? No, no, no. And you're about weeks. to run around against the poor boys from Telegarupna who have just had 27 kicked against from Against Josh the boat that couldn't get a game at AFL level. And you're yeah, on oh, the How way. old is he? Former All-Australian, 275 games. So what are you saying, clubs. 44, somewhere around there? That's what I need to kick? Ooh, 44, Jeez. based on your AFL uh, career compared to his, it's got to be like pipped there. <laughs> Carry on. I'll be happy just to lay a couple off, get a touch. <laughs> Where would you be playing? Are you going to put knowing oh. knowing now, uh, knowing that you know now, is it just just put me in the four line because I'm a fair chance to sure, just snag yeah. a couple. No, nah, full back. Where do you reckon? <laughs> <I'm gonna set laughs> up? Well, you can run around the midfield and you know get your thirty and nah, whatever, but of course you're going to go nah, get their with, money's worth. Yeah, now nah, playing with my brother and uh, brother-in-law, so they'll do the dirty work in uh, in and under and. I'll uh, reap the rewards up front, hopefully. Let's let's hope so. There'll be we should get a roll. We should send the cameras out there. We should go out no, there. No, no, no. I I call, we should go I, out there. We should call take it. the headsets. <laughs> yeah. Maisie, Jules. Yep. There. You get a bit of production out there, and you can, find, you can call it one out, Beach. Oh, happy to. Uh, we've Old got a... Smitty and and and, and um, Jono and <laughs> Wheels, Wheels, and everyone's got a Macca, don't Tubby they? and <laughs> Macca and the lads. Second half action coming up here: the Hawks and the Power. Sean Burgoyne's 400th. It's Port Adelaide by 42 points. Here's Andrew Mays. What have Hawthorne got to answer in this second half? Lie set as things get underway. Taps it to space. You can there for the Hawks. Got the hand pass away. Another chance for Howe on the outer wing. Short pass is a good one. 
Moore takes the mark. In between wing and half forward, trying to propel the Hawks into attack. Long kick, reaches inside 50. Jonas with the big fist over the top at the front of the pack. Howe followed up well, snapped to the top of the square. Bramble left it, got over that pack. Now Segler turns, back to Bramble. Can he get a shot away? Kick right to the line, and it's knocked over for one behind by Jonas. First score took 42 seconds in the third quarter. It's a behind, 1-6-12. The Hawks, 8-5-53, Port Adelaide. This seagull's going to fly into this commentary box in a minute. Is that many of them? I hope not. (laughs) The, the, the <laughs> angle they're flying on it, it does look like a... out the door. <laughs> <laughs> Panic set in. <laughs> Jonas with the kick out to Burton, who marks at half back. First time he's played against his old team, by the way, Ryan Burton. He goes short to Houston. Half back flank. So Hawthorne with the early behind in his third term. They only kick one behind for the whole of the second quarter. He goes all the way back to McKenzie, and McKenzie across to the opposite back pocket for Aaliyah. Grandstand AFL, ABC Radio and ABC Sport Digital. Alia goes back to McKenzie, top of the defensive goal square. So Hawks well set up. And goes short to Motlop. Feels like the second quarter already. Yeah. <laughs> Hawthorne, uh, they have done a good job here defensively just to number off and then force them wide with the switch and get them to go nowhere. So they have set up defensively. Motlop's kick just misses Houston, ends up out of play. So we'll have a throw in here, half forward for the Hawks, 60 metres out from their attacking goal. Uh, The other game tonight, a little closer, a two-goal lead for Carlton over Fremantle. Early stages, third quarter. If you want to listen to that, there is a call available through the AFL app. Just look for the ABC icon. You can follow along. Jess Webster, we'll get to her too momentarily. She's down on the boundary. There's been one sub already made. Here's Andrew Mace. Mitchell with the clearance. Kicks off the side of the boot. Centre-half forward. Wines, Sharks it. Tap forward by Rosie after Wine's kick went nowhere. Nice set. Nice roving by the big man. Gets to about 70 out. Kicks in front of Georgiades as well. No mark taken. Mops up. He'll run in and kick the goal. Fair effort by the Ruckman there. Lies set. Inspired by his work late last week. Could have almost taken a bounce at right half forward. Goal to Port Adelaide. 9-5-59 they move to. 1-6-12 the Hawks. Two and a half minutes played in the third term. Well, I wasn't sure about Rosie's decision to knock that on, but uh, obviously he had a plan. He's <laughs> doing that. And the, the, the Ruckman, what about his... You called it, Maisie, just barging his way through. Nothing better. Thought he had a, an option for a couple of runners, but he liked Georgiati's one out, the Shawnee Burgoyne. Shawnee just lost his footing, went to ground, and Georgiati's kept his, ran into the easiest of goals. But Scotty Lysette, take a bow. That was very good from the big Ruckman. You're, being, not... you're being very kind with a couple of options. All he wants was steaming past him on the inside. Yeah, and either, either, would have, uh, either ran into an open goal or would have had the little Joe Goose over the top to George Yardis, but uh, it came off in the end. Kept but great simple. work by Lysette. Nine in a row for Port Adelaide after Hawthorne kicked the first of the game. Back in the middle, aim on to Boak. Hand pass away to Byrne Jones. Drills it long forward. Marshall will run at it. Fist comes from Hardigan at the back. Spills down underneath Hardwick. He went without it. Has a second go. Goes back and collects it. Tumbles a kick out of the back flank. Howe shoots a hand pass hurriedly. Out towards Scrimshaw. He left it behind. Bergman collects a Port Adelaide. High half forward. Hand pass to Motlop. On to Byrne Jones to centre half forward and winds. He loads up. Looks for the goal line. Burgoyne just ushers it through. The kick offline and a minor score. And Burgoyne on the kick out duties. The Hawthorne fans happy with that. He steps outside the square to be his sixth touch of the night for Sean Burgoyne in game 400. High kick looking for Segler. McAvoy's there as well. Segler third in line. Lysette fourth in line. Ends up with him. Snaps back inside 50. Bramble running, running back with the flight. Nice mark. Inside defensive 50. The Hawk, the young Hawk, takes it. Has Scrimshaw short. Ignores him. Pulls the kick at the last minute. Not a bad one if it stays in play. It did. And Phillips takes the mark. Phillips, left half back, trying to usher a couple of his fellow defenders to get running. Now the switch is perhaps on for Scrimshaw. He ignores options further in midfield. Instead, kicks it short. Mark taken there by Greaves. Greaves looking for that switch. Drops the ball, regathers, and he's okay because he has Phillips as the outlet kick. Phillips very short to Mitchell. That went about 12 metres. 
Mitchell still at left half back. This is going absolutely nowhere at the moment for the Hawks. Coming off 40 last week, Tom Mitchell, third time this year. He goes long towards Segler, who marks strongly, and then dragged down by Lysett. It's almost 50. The umpire says, stay there. Segler, of course, if you can remember, back in 2014, played in the prelim against Port, was actually dropped for the grand final with McAvoy returning. After playing in the quali in the prelim for the Hawks, down to half forward, Cozzy, third in the line, and Kaczynski marks. Ended up taking it on his chest, most unusual. That was a good sticky miss, wasn't it? Did the body work on uh, Aliyah. He just really just stuck. It was a slow build up, though. <laughs> oh, jeez, wasn't, wasn't it? A couple of mistakes made. They managed to get through just with a couple of really good contested marks, but that's kind of been the MO for most of the night. Just slow, kind of boring. Again, Port set up defensively well, so both teams setting up defensively. His first real look at it tonight, Kaczynski on the set shot. Unusual, unorthodox approach, but that's a fair carry on the kick. He's just offline. It's whacked through for a minor score. So Hawthorne a 1-7, Port Adelaide a 9-6. Hawks kick the first goal inside the opening four minutes, and Port Adelaide have kicked the last nine unanswered. We've now travelled six and a half minutes into this third term. It's Port Adelaide by 47 points. Burton with the kick in duties. Kicks it low to Bergman. Bergman outside of defensive 50, short to Motlop on the boundary line. Motlop thinking about the switch. He has McKenzie still stationed inside defensive 50. Goes with an exaggerated candy cell and then goes back to McKenzie. McKenzie chips about a 45-metre pass as he can to Jonas. Jonas short inboard, still behind halfway here to Boak. Boak with the attacking kick. That's a good one to Marshall. Right in the middle of the Docklands. Now go. And he goes eventually. Took a bit off it. Harding had got a run at it. Made the spoil. Down to Phillips. Now Segler's almost caught. Umpire said play on. Got a handball away just. It spills to Bonner. Good tackle by Jath. And Bonner's dragged to the ground. It should be holding the wall. No play on at the last moment. Drew emerged. Had a shot for goal. And kicked it straight down the throat of Frost. Frost quickly out the half back to Hardwick. And marks for Hawthorne. Just kicks off a single step to Shields. Right half back for the Hawks. Three time Premiership winner. Liam Shields now in his 235th game. Again, he's just going to go long down the line to the contest. Big boy McAvoy's in there. Kaczynski reaching over the back. No mark. Spills to Jonas. Hand pass back into the corridor. Bergman clever. Rode the hit. Socket it forward. But straight to Burgoyne. Tumbles a punt inside the forward 50. Takes a rude bounce for O'Brien. It'll work okay for Kaczynski. He knocks it towards the goal line and too much on it. Through it goes for a minor score behind. So Hawks now 1-8. They were 1-1 by the way. So their last seven scores have been behinds. 1-8-14. Port Adelaide a 9-6-60. It's a 46-point lead for Port. It's uh, eight minutes into the third term. Burton to bring it out of defence. Kick up towards the wing. Dixon didn't get a fly at it. Now in the pack. Georgiades can't get a run at it. Shields is over there. Ball spills to Wines. Wines hand pass to Bonner, who missed Burn Jones, who has to go back and mop up. He does okay to get it to Bonner by hand, to Allaire, and he floats a 20-metre handball back to Burton, where it started, just outside of his defensive goal square. Flares it out wide to Bergman, who takes the mark left half back. Lice sets a short option for him if he wants. Ops against it. Has a couple of options in the middle. And he goes oh. wide and misses everyone. Amon, sprawled to his right, couldn't take it. Out of pounds on the full. Strange build-up here from the power. Hurried kick down to Howe, who takes the mark, plays on up against the boundary line, 45 out, tight angle, super finish. Daniel Howe with a bit of class. The game has badly needed some of that polish. And on the run from the boundary line, right half forward, he's dobbed it. 9 6 60 Port Adelaide. Hawthorne have finally stopped the run of nine consecutive Port Adelaide goals. They're 2 8 20, 10 minutes into the third term. It's back to 40 points. Well, it was a bit of quick play from uh, the kick from Ian McAvoy to Howe to find the space, but it was off a mistake, of, a slow mistake. It was a boring mistake from Port Adelaide, let's be honest. And then uh, 
what a finish. I thought he could have just straightened up to come back into the corridor. O'Brien made a nice little lead straight back up at him, but backed himself in. I wouldn't say it was a percentage play, Lids, that you and I both encourage, but uh, it was good enough to slot it. So good finish in the end, but jeez. Uh, it's tied to the boundary, isn't it? It's a real good finish. Yeah, but it's, it's, they've just kind of picked up where they left off in the second quarter. The game's not getting any better, or no team's taking real risks, are they? Nice set down the wines, dragged off his kick, Mitchell. Hand pass looking for Greaves, who wrote the bump nicely from Rosie. And now Hardwick spears a pass into the middle to Scrimshaw. Sold Mitchell into trouble. Back to Scrimshaw by hand. Short pass is okay to Shields. Just travelled 15, says the umpire. And he can go back and reset from right on. Halfway kicks into the man on the mark. Boone Jones, great desperation in the middle. Receives the hand pass too. Now a hand pass to Wines, to Mays. He had a fumble. Just kicking off the ground is Wines. Inside 50. Hardigan in a foot race against Rosie. Hardigan gets there. Hand passes to Space more than anything. And that was as good as a try from uh, Young Greaves. Happy to see it over the boundary line. Not sure whether he lost his footing accidentally or intentionally there, but really disguise it all that well. Out of bounds it is in the right forward pocket for Port Adelaide. 40 points, Port Adelaide's lead, 11 played, third term from the boundary throw in, Rose beautifully, Pow Pepper takes on the tackler, hand pass to Amon who's crunched, two Hawthorne players in opposite directions, just bounced off him, got a hand pass out to Bonner, his hand pass a turnover, Greaves to Mitchell, wrapped up trying to take on Georgiati, he's taken high, Tom Mitchell's free at centre half back for the Hawks. So we think around 20,000 in the house. They're trying to get involved despite the fact they haven't had eight to cheer about. Just two goals for the Hawks. They have kicked the last in the game. They trail 2 8 to 9 6. It's port by 40, 12 minutes into the third. Mitchell agrees. Right back pocket here for the Hawks. But he's gone backwards 20 metres sideways. What? They've maintained a lot of possession tonight, Hawthorne, but they've turned it over a lot, like on this occasion. Wines takes the mark, fires. Port Adelaide inside 50. No mark taken. Just got a bit to do. He did well to get it to Frost, who took on one. Got the hand pass away to Warpool. Out to Greaves, who had a fumble at the wrong moment. Coming the other way, it is Bonner on his right boot. He's opposite boot, and he misses. Holds his head in his hand. That was a good chance gone begging. Nine goals, seven, 61 Port Adelaide. 2 8 20, the Hawks. 12 played, second term, uh, third term, rather. Jess Webster's on the boundary. Uh, Jess, much activity down there? No, the Seagulls have gone away. Um, again, they just keep coming in waves. It's just really strange. Just uh, actually a quick update on uh, Kane Farrell. He spent some time in the rooms last quarter. He's re-emerged to start the second half in a knee brace, which is never usually a good sign. Hyper extended his right knee in the first 10 minutes of the game, subbed out for Martin Frederick. Ollie Hanrahan yet to be used for the Hawks. He's their Medi sub as O'Brien marked on the wing and Unusual kick, just went long, 50 metres down the line. It skids out of play, and we'll have a throw in here. Half forward for Hawthorne. Carlton have kicked two in a row. 15-minute mark of the third term at the G, so they lead Freo by 23 points. Freo playing for a place in the eight. Here it's 41 points, the margin. Port Adelaide leading Hawthorne, and from the boundary throwing. It's whacked straight back out of play by McAvoy, and we'll do it all again. Sean Burgoyne with the six touches so far. Quiet night so far in his 400th game. For the boundary throw in, Lysett hooks it down behind. Warple, hurried kick forward, but lean it underneath it, takes a strong mark. 20 metres out from his defensive goal line. Pulled by 41, midway through the third term. Gets to his feet eventually. Hawthorne have time to set up here in defence. Short pass to Burn Jones. Right back pocket for Port Adelaide. Again, just travelled the 15. Burn Jones short again. He finds Jonas, right back pocket still. He goes back to Burn Jones, who just trotted past him and gets to the point of 50. I've got the same text message for you twice here, Beach, which has been sent a couple of minutes apart, but no name. I'll get to that. Switch of plays on to McKenzie. <laughs> McKenzie still inside defensive 50 to Bonner. He goes to Amon, finally outside of defensive 50. Long kick past the wing, and this might work too. Drew takes it on his chest. He wants to go quickly. Instead, he goes short and wide, and it's okay for Marshall. 
Marshall load up, kicks inside 50. Where are the jumpers? Dixon didn't get a run at it. It was Lysette in front, couldn't take the mark. Dixon, good tackle on Warple, ripped him away from the contest. Ball spills for a boundary throw in next to the behind post. Off the SMS, please ask BJ how he went playing poker at Warnies the other night. Oh, did he get a bit of inside info, dropping names? Uh, I got a bad, no, well, I didn't. I ran into a really hot player. So oh. I didn't. I didn't win. So that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> was Who say. is that? Put a name to it. In, in, in short, <laughs> name was Coward. <laughs> Bawthorn come out of the uh, defensive fifty, and we'll have a ball up here. There's probably something on social media that missed. I was going to say you probably just. I didn't put anything. One on of your loyal media. followers on social media has probably just seen it, Beige, and just referred to them as a coward. Ball up again on the outer wing. You roll in big circles, don't you? No, oh, yeah. Get him, take us down the nets. That's what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> He's only rolled the arm over to, to us in his backyard a few times. He probably wouldn't. He's got fat fingers over there. So we're going to do it all again. Another ball up between wing and half forward here for Hawthorne. In fact, it's Port Adelaide kicking towards the Coventry end of the ground. As they race away out of the middle, Willem Drew was had an outstanding year. Kicks down to half forward. Whacked away by Howe. And then Greaves just whacks it over the boundary line. Another 10 metres further forward. So boundary throw in 60 metres out from Port's goal at left half forward. A 41-point lead for the power, 16-and-a-half played third term. A goal each in the quarter so far. And the other game at the MCG, a goal to Frio, so Carlton's lead cut to 17, 18 played in the third. Toss back into play from the back of the stoppage. Port try to exit. Now it's Drew. All over his Hawthorne opponent. Bramble. It'll be a free, it'll be a ball up rather at the top of 50. Another chance for Port in attack. Lysett assumes front position. Didn't get a decisive tap. Mitchell pushes off a couple. Got the hand pass to Shields. Quick kick into the middle and almost the mark running back with the flight of the ball there. Not completed in the end by Wines. And now a chance out wide. Jonas, short, lean it. Lean it with a couple of options short. And one of them... He's back to Jonas. Jonas switches play. Still inside defensive 50 to Aaliyah. A lot of the game has been like this. A lot of chipping around in defence, looking for a way out. Aaliyah runs to 50. Really got under that one as he kicked it. Marshall did a body work there on McAvoy. He looked at the umpire. Umpire looked at him and said, play on. Hand pass comes the way of Bonner. He dribbles it along the ground. Is it going to no, be he, deliberate? It is. He he see, see how you saw the umpire come from 30 away, steaming in? He got the Fred Flintstones, the little short, quick yep. steps going. And he was over there ready to go with a deliberate call. Right call, though? Not really. It's Jankwath Jath you know, darting away off the back flank. Kicks long the contest on the wing. Reaching for it, McKenzie, no mark, spills down underneath Kajitsky. Handball in board for the Hawks, O'Meara collects. Offloads to Greaves through the middle of Docklands. Kicks to half forward and hits up his intended target. It's Bramble who takes the mark right on the 50-meter arc. He had to give that to Scrim Scrimshaw, surely. Left footer, really nice kick, runs in, kicks it from 50. He's making that with momentum. 23-year-old Bramble just lays it up to the top of the goal square. O'Brien down there, leapt up, can't come down with it. Spills to Bonner. He's kicked it straight into his teammate and boat. Ricochets out to Shields, high up and under into the pocket, not 15. Walpole swings around onto the left foot and slots it. They kick two in a row, the Hawks. After Port banged on nine straight, Hawthorne have replied with the next couple. And Port Adelaide, 9-7-61, Hawthorne, 3 8 26. 19 minutes played in the third term. Their lead cut to, as my mental mouse, 35 points. Port Adelaide's way, grandstand AFL. Brett Delidio and Brennan got up. Yeah, I think I agree with you there, Beach. Once Bramble got his chance, probably should have given that off the, off the scrimshaw rolling around. Makes the game a little bit more exciting as well when you see a handball receive, break the paint and have a shot on goal, but... Unlucky Bonner booting him into the backside of Trav Boat. Always appreciate those from your teammates, which is good, but... <laughs> cold, nice. cold night as well. Cold night. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. But a nice finish by Warple. We've seen him. Uh, he's down in the goal square now, so he's obviously spending a bit of time down there. But a nice finish on the left. Probably uh, thought he was going to get paid the mark, but played on. Snapped her through. One goal one this evening for Warple. Segler. 
from the restart. Down to Mitchell. Mitchell to Bramble. That's a Greaves, rather. And he is able to get it to Hardwick, who ducked under one tackle. Now to O'Meara by hand. He goes further afield to Bramble, who tried to keep it in. Couldn't quite do so. He's forced over for a boundary throw and in between wing and half forward here for the power. Carlton's lead Maisie just 10 points now. 23 minutes into the third turn. Kick the first four goals of the game. Fremont are playing for a spot in the eight. We'll keep you updated throughout from the boundary throw. And Newcomb's drilled into the turf and we'll have a ball up. The margin's 35 here. 9 7 to 3 8. And Sean Burgoyne's 400th game. Time on in the third turn. From the restart, Boak takes on the tackle of Nash. Hand pass to Rose. He kicks it straight into Drew. Second time Porter done that in the last minute. Paul ricochets to Houston. He's tackled and we'll have a ball up. Earlier today, the Giants provisionally in the top eight at the time being. They'll be dislodged by Frio if the Dockers come from behind to defeat Carlton. But they beat Melbourne by nine and Brisbane by 52 over Adelaide. Lysett to Boak. Now down to Howe of the Hawks. He was pushed off his kick. Landed inside the field of play. Did well to kick, uh, keep it in as he was pushed. Now Kaczynski down to Bruce. And they went out there even though they are outnumbered. So good effort by the Hawks. Newcomb's pushed off his kick. Got it to centre half forward though. O'Brien had his arms chopped. He wants to get things going quickly. Gives it some more. Kick inside 50. He's not a great one. It's set here for Jonas. He takes it with no pressure at all. Jonas. Short pass over the top. Burn Jones. Got his communication wrong there with Motlop. Motlop's able to pick it up. Kick right down the middle. Big collision between Mays and coming the other way, Hardwick. Hawthorne able to win out now, though. Jaff takes a couple on. He got the hand pass away just to Newcomb. Looping handball is a good one to Bramble. Out further wide to Greaves, and he gets it to right half forward, just stopping and propping, and maybe a hint of in the back there against O'Meara. Ball spilt free. Frederick got the hand pass away just. Lena. Kicks to space and mopping up there is Frost who goes for a run. Oh, Frost and then just shakes off one would-be tackler. Chucks it on the left boot, kicks back inboard. But straight to Rosie, you can hear from the jeers after his staging incident earlier, he's going to get a free kick. He was legged in the tackle from Warple which slipped down. He goes back to Burton. They're booing him as well, the Hawks, the former Hawthorne footballer who got traded to Port. His kicks of turnover. Sliding in, Newcomb takes the intercept mark alongside the centre circles. Hand pass away to Hardwick. Tucks it under his arm. In fact, it's Bramble. Kicks hurriedly inside the forward 50. Off his not preferred left boot. Bounces to Bruce in the pocket. Burns off Jonas. Bruce snaps. Bruce has got it. Three in a row for the Hawks. They've woken from their slumber in the second term. A goalless second quarter and now three in a row to start the third. 23 minutes travelled in the turn. The Hawks are 4 8 32. Port Adelaide 9 7 61. Port's lead cut to 29. Well, I thought Lockie Bramble hadn't read the playbook. He had Shawnee Burgoyne sitting all by himself at centre forward. He's bypassed him and some class from Punky Bruce. We've watched him do that for a lot of years now. Very good on the snap. Ability to turn around. Jonas could not go with him. But I reckon if uh, Shawnee Burgoyne's calling for the footy, especially tonight, you, you just drop it off to him, don't you, Beach? <laughs> I think so. And, oh, it, was a, it was on his left turn. There was a mistake earlier. It's like, even Hawthorne have well, he kicked the last two, you say? Or th three. 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 But it's still not pretty, is it? So make the most of opportunities, and they're not great ones, to be honest, but uh, doing enough just to keep themselves... But they are looking solid, more solid in defence. So when Port do win the ball, they're forcing him into a slow play. Now they're trying to take a couple of risks, unnecessary risks when they're under pressure and, and getting uh, better looks. Segler to Warple to Shields, who kicks to right half forward. Now Hawthorne with a chance to end a 50. Lysett, though, spins out of a tackle. Got the hand pass to Boak, hand pass to Wines. Comes off the side of his boot and sitting underneath it is Segler inside the centre square. Gets things going quickly. Greaves slips over and just diving over him, which was quite good in the end by Dixon, so as not to injure himself. Greaves now... Goes back for seconds. Hand pass to Segler, to Jath, to Nash. Short kick is not bad either. Back to Giat. Hawthorne gives it to him. Giat 
as the crowd rise, kicks inside 50, no mark taken, McAvoy, Shields now, snap to the top of the goal square, ball bounces on its point over the head of O'Brien and out next to the right behind post, but another chance here deep forward and the crowd's starting to get involved here. The crowd's riding this like it was the Hawthorne comeback game against the Saints at Waverley all those years ago, as if it's going to be this... Miraculous turnaround. There's still a bit of a way to go yet. 29 points is Port Adelaide's lead from the boundary throw in. Bonner just locks up. Now Bramble straight away. We'll have a ball up forward pocket for the Hawks. Bit of momentum though now with the Hawkers having kicked the last three of the game. Here's McAvoy. Grabs it. Hands it to O'Meara. Spins into trouble. Caught. Pinged. Holding the ball. Free kick to Port. In the defensive 50. If you're just joining us, Hawthorne kicked the first goal of the game. Port the next to nine. And now Hawthorne the last three, so after leading the game by as many as 47 points, it's currently just 29 ports away, 26 minutes into the third turn. Burn Jones, long kick out of defence, Segler the spoil over the top, comes to Bruce. Bruce, some Nash kicks inside, 50, going back with the flight, Warple couldn't take it, Moore on the boundary line, hand pass back to Warple, did he cop a high one, or in the back, no, does the boundary line win out, it does. Do you want more scores from the MCG, Maisie? It's very close. <laughs> Carlton by, he knows, mate. Carlton by two points. Oh. They did lead by 28. They kicked the first five of the game. They lead Freo by just two. Deep into time on third quarter. Hopefully we get something similar here. McAvoy wins it down in front. Now a chance. Ball came through the pack. Hand pass to space. So Brian picks it up. Nash tried to bustle his way through. Bruce almost out of midair. Came off the side of the boot and out of bounds. Houston happy to see it over. <laughs> I'm quite raking. That was never deliberate, oh even though God. the Hawks fans wanted it. Ball in next to the left behind post. 12 scoring shots to 16. Hawthorne 4-8. Port 9-7. Deep forward for the Hawks and with a bit of momentum, O'Brien doing the ruck work. O'Meara passing through, went without it. Phillips, oh, in fact, uh, Newcomb collects and he's tackled. Well, the ball up, 40 out from the Hawks goal. Kicking to the lock at end, a cold night in Melbourne, roof open. Sean Burgoyne's 400th, the Hawks trying to get going after conceding nine straight. Passing through the stop in Shields. Hand pass, though, went to Burn Jones. He gives it to Boke of the power. Dumps a kick out of the defensive 50. There's a whistle on the play. Free kick. It's going Port Adelaide's way. They felt all night, Hawthorne, that the sort of rubber the green's gone against them. It's Mays here who gets the free and goes short to Houston. Mark's defensive side of the wing. Houston, defensively to Burton. Takes the mark, about 55 out from his defensive goal. Looking for a couple of options. He's got both wide. Instead goes over his head. Where are the flyers? Segler takes it almost unopposed in the air. Got in front of Dixon who gives a big spray further up the field. Segler looking for a way out now. Segler long. Phillips will be forced to fly here in front. Almost took it, the small man. Chance for Wines. And he slices that for the second kick in a row. Out of bounds on the foot. Segler takes it quickly, chips inboard to Hardwick, Hardwick back inside defensive 50, now a chance for Bramley, takes a one bound, Sander Kappel gets out of defensive 50, long to Scrimshaw, he's forward of centre wing, thought about going, he did quickly with the kick, it's a good one too to find Mitchell, who swings around, he'll load up, inside attacking 50, where are the Flyers, Lysette, big spoil over the top, Bergman hit the contest hard. Got it to Rosie. Rosie just blazes away. Clears the immediate danger. Now Motlop gets a good bounce from the ball and he's going to concede <laughs> 25 metres. Go directly backwards to Wines who takes the mark at left half back. They've wanted to be involved all night. The Hawthorne fans, they think there's 20 plus in the house with the restrictions obviously on crowd limits and plenty of reasons not to come to the footy. But for Sean Burgoyne's 400th, they've turned out in a pretty good number of the Hawks at Docklands tonight. But unfortunately, their team well down on the scoreboard. They did kick the last three of the quarter. The crowd desperate to get themselves involved. It's 29 points at three-quarter time. Port Adelaide 9-7-61. Hawthorne 4-8-32. The damage was done in the first half where Port Adelaide kicked nine straight goals. They led by 47 points. The Hawks with the last three have cut the margin to 29.
The goal kickers, two for Marshall, two for Bergman, two for Dixon, and then one each to Georgiardi, Georgiardis. Mays and Frederick, so all of them with one each. While for Hawthorne, two for Luke Proust. The first goal of the game and the last goal of the game. One for Howe, one for Warple. Meanwhile, at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, a close one between Fremantle and Carlton. And it's Carlton who lead it by a solitary... No, I was about to say a solitary point. Scores a level. Three-quarter time, 63 points. Each of two, Fremantle 8-15-63, Carlton 10-3-63. Carlton led by 28 points early. They kicked the first five goals. Fremantle have responded to kick eight of the last 13 in the game. There is a call available if you want to listen to the finish of that match through the AFL app. Look out for the ABC icon there. There's still plenty to come here on ABC Radio and ABC Sport Digital. The thoughts of Brendan Goddard and Brett Delidio. We want to hear from you off the SMS 0437 774 774. The Hawks turn this into a memorable comeback on a special night for Sean Burgoyne. They've kicked the last three. The margins back to 29, Port Adelaide's way. This is Grandstand AFL. To watch the latest stories from ABC News and clips from our current affairs shows online, it's time to go direct to the source. Australia's most reliable news can be found on ABC Radio, the ABC News app and the ABC News website. Download the free app now and stay across local breaking stories, updates and analysis from Australia's most trusted news. What matters to you matters to us. And it's all on the ABC News app and news.abc.net.au. The 2021 AFL Premiership season on ABC Radio and on ABC Sport Digital. Tap forward by Rosie after Wines kick went nowhere. Nice set, nice roving by the big man. Gets to about 70 out, kicks in front of Georgiades as well. No marks taken, mops up. He'll run in and kick the goal. Hurry kick down to Howe, who takes the mark, plays on up against the boundary line. 45 out, tight angle, super finish. Daniel Howe with a bit of class. 23-year-old Bramble just lays it up to the top of the goal square. O'Brien down there, left up, can't come down with it. Spills to Bonner. He's kicked it straight into his teammate and both. Ricochets out to Shields, high up and under into the pocket, not 15. Warple swings around onto the left foot, slots it. They kick two in a row, the Hawks. Bramble kicks hurriedly inside the forward 50. Off his not preferred left boot. Bounces to Bruce in the pocket. Burns off Jonas. Bruce stands. Bruce has got it. Three in a row for the Hawks. The 2021 AFL Premiership season on ABC Radio and on ABC Sport Digital. It's just the third, third quarter that they've won all year. Hawthorne, it really hasn't been their term so far in 2021. And yet they kick the last three of the quarter try and give themselves a little bit of a spark having trailed by 47 points Port's lead cut to 29 at three quarter time we want to hear from you 0437 774 774 let us know where you're listening what you're doing on this Saturday night uh, still plenty of people in lockdown across the country um, great to have you with us on Grandstand AFL Brennan Goddard and Brett Delidio here at three quarter time Port by 29 well BJ I'm not sure it's uh, reached any great heights this game but Port have dominated on the stat sheet. They're plus, what, 38, 40, 48 on the uh, in disposals. I'm looking at Ollie Wines, and it's probably sort of summed up the night. He's had 23 kicks of his 32 disposals. He's kicked it at 26%. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, it's, uh... like, I understand he's getting a lot of it contested. He's had 16 of those have been contested. But he's also had some uh, just basic drop punts, kick over the man. <laughs> uh, kicked him off his shin. Yeah, but... That sort of sums up the night a little bit in terms of most of it's been just really slow and boring, slow build-up. And I get it. Hawthorne are a great defensive side. The way they set up, they're, they're actually pretty good. They force you into that sort of game, maybe. But I'd like to see a bit more dare from Port. If they're going to come up against better sides, they're not going to play this way, are they? They're, they're going to have to move the ball quicker because other teams will set up strongly de- defensively and then they'll just whip it back through the corridor and they'll score on you. So... Surely they've got to get the ball rolling a little bit here and just take the game on. And I don't think they're going to lose. No, they're not. But pe- people's argument would then be, oh, well, they just can't, you know, play on blindlessly and go through the corridor. They can't. But what they can do is it's almost like they're conceding to just being slowed down, but they can get off the mark, play on quick, play that almost Richmond style where they're quick but conservative with where, where they're actually trying to move the ball. So get off the mark, roll on quickly, kick it long down the line. 
Therefore, you're more likely to have a bit more isolation, less numbers, have the ability to get back. The defensive team or the opposition being Hawthorne, then they can't set up defensively and then be in a really good position then to attack when they win the ball back. So it's not about just going through the corridor and, and, and you know taking those unnecessary risks because we know that the effect of that the other way is he more likely to get scored against. But um, Hawthorne did a really good job to get themselves you know somewhat back in the game, win the quarter. Um, you know, I'd probably say they played the game in their forward half uh, and won that battle in that quarter because they set up defensively. But Port almost played into the hands because they were unwilling to move the ball quicker and take that long kick down the line when they had a bit of isolation. We saw Charlie Dixon get really angry earlier because they had opportunity to go there straight away and instead they've gone backwards and sideways and given up at 10 metres of ground and then had to go there anyway so the old rule of thumb is you only switch it when you can you know play on and continue on out the other side but that's that's not what Port are doing they're stuffing around the ball in the back half through the midfield um so yeah we just like a bit more dare a bit more uh, speed into the game again and that can come from a bit of overlap run to and, and be conservative with who actually move the ball Hawks with the first, Port the next nine, Hawks the last three, power by 29 points. Final quarter underway, Tom Mitchell with the centre clearance, kicks it deep in the McAvoy direction, spills front and centre, and Byrne Jones up to it, hands it to Jonas, kicks one with the lot, out the power pepper at half back. Hand pass away to Amon, almost run down by Bramble, affects the kick out wide, and in the end, Segler happy to push it over the boundary line, will have a throw in. Jess Webster's on the boundary line, Jess, anything happening down there? Only that the wind chill factor has dropped to about four degrees, guys. I'm really feeling it in this last quarter. Uh, no sub as yet? No, Hanrahan is still the unused sub for Hawthorne. Earlier in the game, Frederick t- uh, brought into the game in the first 10 minutes a hyperextension of the right leg of Kane Farrell, unfortunately subbed out. From the boundary throw in, Nash onto it with that Irish kicking style around. Oh. Oh, this is O'Brien goes for a fly. Can't come down with it. Second week in a row. Jonas, hand pass away to Byrne Jones. He gives it to Amon, who hurriedly kicks to half back for Port. Shields tries to mop up. Just lost grasp of the footy at the last moment. Pal Pepper came in. Umpire circling. He says, I'll have it. Ball up. About five metres inside the boundary line. Right half forward here for the Hawks. Tossed up straight away. Lysette does battle again with Segler. Mitchell, strong in the contest, got it out to Shields. He couldn't grab it cleanly. Becomes the tackler and locks things up. Ball moved about 10 metres forward for Port Adelaide. So 90 seconds played in this fourth term. 9-7-61 the power, 4-8-32 the Hawks. Amon just grabs it with one hand, slams it on his boot to centre wing. Jeff coming one way, Rosie the other. Burgoyne kicks and turns it over. Houston takes the mark, running back with a fly to the ball. What are you saying, Beach? No, it's, we haven't really had a, a chance to kind of get a kick mark scenario, a bit of composed ball movement, but looks like then they were just willing to take it down the line and get numbers front and square, and now they've got a good opportunity inside 50. Houston to aim on, kicks to half forward, Power Pepper high ball inside, but Howes underneath it. Takes the mark defensively. 30 out from his defensive goal line. Comes wide to Jaff. Off the SMS, Karen in Sunshine says, go the power. I'm a Cats fan, but hoping Port get home. And Colin, I don't know if there's any fishermen amongst us. We'll get to Colin's text momentarily as Jaff goes down the wing. McKenzie for Port by hand reads it down to Lena. He gives it off to Amon. Kicks inside 50. Georgiades and Frost both slip over. Frost was clobbered high. No free kick. Hardwick. Gets the clearing ball out to Bramble at half-back. Bramble wants to go quickly. He's got Segler as an option, and he reached over the top. McKenzie took the mark, gave it to the running Phillips, who was caught on his right, kicked on his left. Didn't have the penetration to get over the back to Bruce. The Lear's there to mop up. He comes out of defence and hits the chest of Lysette, who wants to slow things down. Lysette. Again, just pops it up high into the night sky. Dixon with a run at it. Might have got a shove. He did. And Frost a little clumsy in that marking contest. So Dixon with the free kick. Hasn't had a great deal of it tonight. Well, he wouldn't want to have been a forward in either of those these teams this evening. Long kick from Dixon. Gets to the back of the pack. Rosie there trying to pounce on it. Paddles it to his own advantage. Bonner takes it from his grasp. Big tackle on him by O'Meara. Umpire says, I'll have it. Just at the top of the goal square for Port Adelaide. A chance deep forward. They lead this one at the moment by 29 points. The same margin it was 
at three-quarter time. Port of a lock at end. 15 out from their attacking goal. Segler wins it down. Here's O'Meara. Whacks it out to half-back. Lice it. Picks it up around his ankles. Tries to break the tackle of Phillips. Ball spills out to Shields. Shields kicks smart at Lice. It still follows up the big man. Close to the boundary line. Mitchell's hand pass eventually out of play. And we'll have a throw in here. Left half forward for Port. So four and a half minutes without a goal, without a score, in fact, to start the final turn. Port by 29. Sean Bergwijn with seven touches in his 400th game. He's currently stationed in the defensive 50. Lysett was injured in that contest. Might have just jarred his ankle so he couldn't get back for the ruck contest. Travis Boak nominated himself, ran 30 metres and pretty much squared it. This time it's going to be Lysett in the ruck as he hobbles to the contest with Segler. Toss back into play. He gets the front position and palms it down to Boak. Boak just taps it to the advantage of Wines. Wines held the hand pass for just long enough to get it to Houston. Kick off one step, looking for Dixon, who was caught behind Frost, became the spoiler, and knocks it out of play. Left half forward here for Port Adelaide. Slow build up. They lead this by 29 points. Sean Burgoyne's 400th game. Five minutes played, final term on Grandstand AFL. Score still level at the MCG. Four minutes into the final quarter there. 64 points apiece, Freo and Carlton. We'll keep you updated from the boundary or from the boundary throw in Nash to Shields. Hurried kick forward, turned out okay. The mark taken by Cozzy here, right? Kaczynski right here on the wing, looks inboard to Bramble, plays on, caught, just gets a hand pass away. Forward to Phillips, centre half forward for Hawthorne under the pump. His handball straight to Mays. Port went it back along the half back line. Burn Jones to Motlop to McKenzie, all by hand, or in fact, winds to McKenzie. And then he kicks long in the Lysett direction. Gets the contact from Frost. Dixon and Frost chase the loose footy. Half forward for Port. Frost picks it from Dixon's pocket. Tumbles a kick though straight to Mays. Looks for an unguarded goal square. Kicks a drop punt from 52 out. It skids through from behind. Here's our first score of the final quarter. It's come after six minutes. Port 9-8. Hawthorne 4-8. Six minutes into the final turn. That's some long gaps where there's been no score on the board. This is another one. As Corbin said, six minutes for the opening behind this final quarter. Long kick by Hardwick. Straight up the middle, trying to get something going here for the Hawks. From the crumbs, Spillage comes to Phillips, who hand passes to Warple. Warple further forward to O'Brien. Kicks inside 50, out in front of Bruce. It'll get to him on the bounce. He tries to tap it through his legs to his own advantage. He lost his footing. Burton kept his. He snaps off his left, outside defensive 50, looking for Motlop. Ball bounces on its point, and Jouth was able to palm it to the advantage of Mitchell. Mitchell to Howe, inside 50 with his kick. Not getting a run at it was Kaczynski. A little late, might have caught his opponent high there. He did. The free kick going the way of Aaliyah. In fact, it's going to go to Burn Jones, who was sort of third in that pack. That's a strange free kick. Didn't spot that. The All-Australian Darcy Burn Jones in the back pocket. Heads down the city side of the ground. They come from all directions and off hands. It's out of play. Boundary throwing. This text that I was reading from Colin just caught a 75 centimetre Murray Cod. Mm. Let him go and grabbed another beer by the fire ready for the last quarter from Colin. Legitimately or? I was going to say, as long as you got a photo. <laughs> Plenty of fires going Is on. Is that a big too. Murray Cod? No, uh, good size. Your fisherman lids? Nope. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I don't do it much anymore, but I used to as a kid. Doesn't yeah. happen enough for me. Yeah, just go down to the local dam and camp overnight, catch some eels. Yeah, some eels? Yeah. Nice. From the ball up, half forward here for the Hawks. Segler tries to kick it forward, spills to Wines. And pass to Bonner, long ball down the city wing. Dixon tries to wrestle off Frost. Ball spills front and centre. Port work it out. Nice hands, Rosie. Away to Drew. Feeds it further forward to Motlop. Looking for the free kick. He's going to get it. Tackled by Jath without it, according to the umpire. The free kick count there, Lids? No, I don't, mate. Sorry. No. So he's got to go, he's got to go quicker now. He's missed that opportunity where there's, there's almost a 3v3 now. Hawthorne have got numbers back. Motlop kicks to Rosie in a one-on-one. -on -one. Locks up with Hardwick. No call either way. Bramble keeps it alive. Hands it back to Hardwick, who can kick out to half-back. 
This is his initial target. Gets over the back of that contest, and Kajitski sees it out for a boundary throw in around 80 around from the Port Adelaide goal. They lead this by five goals straight. Nine minutes played final term. This game has not reached any great heights for its entirety. Toss back into play. Lysette won it down in front. Chance for Boak, who kicks off the outside of his boot. To the top of 50, Rosie tries to paddle it to the advantage of Houston. Phillips, though, coming through to Burgoyne by hand. Now to Hardigan, who pulled his kick nicely. Mark taken by O'Brien. O'Brien's not got a lot of movement up forward, except for Phillips, who kept on running. And he kicks it out of bounds on the full. Missed him by a couple of metres. That <laughs> sums up the evening, Corbin. 22-13, the free kick count if I report. 22-13. Yep. Here's Bernard Jones just back onto the wing. Long ball down to half forward. Dixon crashes the pack, spills to Wines. Hand pass to Bergman. Bergman's hand pass back into dispute. Goes back, gets it. Gang tackled. Ball up. 40, or in fact 75 out from Port's goal. At the Melbourne Cricket Ground, scores still level eight minutes into the final term. 64 points apiece. In fact, Eddie Betts has just kicked a goal, so Carlton lead by that margin. A six-point advantage for the Blues. Ten minutes into the final term. Hurried ball forward from the Hawks, and the skid's out of play. We'll have a throw in right on the wing. Ollie Hanrahan and Matty Sub, he's none used so far by the Hawks. Kane Farrell out. In the opening ten minutes, Hyper extended his right knee in a really ugly incident. Frederick into the game early for Port. Dixon having a run in the ruck with McAvoy. Just rips it out of the ruck. Didn't get boot to ball. Hawthorne fans wanted holding the ball. Walpole went in. Just threw out a hand pass. And Kaczynski attacks it hard and slings off with his hips there. McKenzie went smashing into the fence. Hopefully he's okay. He gets to his feet. We did the right thing and tried to uh, look after Kaczynski, but then lost his own footing. Yeah. That AstroTurf down there too, which can be fairly slippery. Hard to stop on when you're going at that pace. From the stoppage, Pau Pepper couldn't get a clear hand pass away. Amon tried to go underground, got it to Pau Pepper. He shoved over the boundary line. Another throw in to take place. Is it Twixbury, the suburb? David at Twixbury, sitting by the fire dog at feet, beer in hand, listening to a good call. Life couldn't be more grandstand. <laughs> oh, there you go. In M in Melbourne, hi team, congrats Sean, come on Port, don't get lax, needs a percentage boost to hear, I want to hear the song, 30 point lead for Port, they, Hawks quickly go forward but only as far as McKenzie dumps a kick out of the defensive arc, straight to Howe, Mark 70 out right half forward, Lysett unsure whether he can stand the mark or not, he's told to clear out and a great kick from Daniel Howe, just spears it out wide to Connor Nash who skids in and marks right half forward, 45 out. It was a nice kick, wasn't it? But uh, if you're going to give up one, you going to be pretty comfortable uh, as a back line, giving it up uh, out there on the boundary. It's going to be a kick from 50. Shields and Alir involved in a bit of push and shove right on the behind line. There's another umpire watching that closely. Connor Nash is against the fence. Kicks from right on the junction of the 50 in the boundary line. Just lays it up. Segler gets a run at it. No mark. Right to the behind line. Bonner walks it through. Minor score, back to 29 as it was at three-quarter time. Shields and Elias still going at it. 13 minutes into the final quarter, Port by 29. They led it by as many as 47. Hawthorne kicked the last three goals of the third term. And Maisie, we've gone 13 minutes here without a goal. Two points. Oh, it's hardly been a game of any highs whatsoever. Alia takes the mark from the kick-in, goes towards the wing. Harden with the big spoil over the back. And he finds the boundary line. Good, solid stuff by the key defender. Good news is we're on to 11 o'clock tonight, so we've got plenty of time to chop it all up. Oh, <laughs> yes. Pull apart the game. Another whole hour to come. Talk about fishing. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wrap up a big day in footy with uh, four games, obviously, to pull apart. Toss back into play. Right on centre wing. Just kicked out of midair by Nash. He gets it up towards attacking 50. Jonas, he's tackled. Nice pressure by Kajitski, and he wanted the boundary line, and he found it. And a couple of Hawthorne supporters wanted too high. Ball to be thrown in, about 60 around from the Hawks' goal. It's 11 Eastern, of course. 10.30 Central Standard Time for 
people listening throughout the great state of South Australia from the boundary throw in. Lysett trying to whack it down from the back as a free kick. It's going against Lysett. He was over the shoulder of McAvoy. And the Bronx cheer as Hawthorne received the free. And just about every player in the ground is inside Hawthorne's forward 50. So McAvoy is just going to kick it in the Kaczynski direction. Who gets free and takes the mark. Kaczynski's got it. Left forward pocket. He'll kick from 25 out. I'm amazed he ended up finding so much space because there's a number of Port players back, but they all looked at each other, and Burton was obviously looking for a bit of help because there's a really good kick in the end. I'm not sure if he actually meant it in terms of just falling into that space in front of Kajisi, but I think one of Port Adelaide's players is up in front of the ball, is just going to use their initiative and come off their man and don't play so safe. Can this light a fire underneath the Hawks? You bet it can. Through it goes, Kaczynski keeps Hawthorne in it. 15 played final turn, that's four in a row for the Hawks. And all of a sudden, Port's lead is just 23 points. 15 played final turn, the power stuck on 9-8. Hawthorne moved to 5-9. Port by 23, Brendan Goddard, Brett Delidio, Grandstand AFL. Yeah, they just sort of went to sleep, didn't they, the uh, Port defenders? Not sure how they ended up with that matchup of Burton v Kaczynski. But I reckon he's played on him all night. As you said, it was a nice kick from McAvoy just to pop it into that space or give him a chance. There was a lot of numbers inside that defensive 50. So to give him a chance one-on-one -on -one is very, very good. Nice kick and a nice finish too from Big Cozzy. Had a few shots on goal tonight. Port's last goal, the three-minute mark of the third term. So Georgiades, it's the only goal they've kicked in the second half. We're going to have a restart in the middle. Poor ball up, so this one's tossed up. Lysette down to Wines, who ran underneath the ball in the end. Coming through was Newcomb, missed it himself. Sliding in was Mitchell, got the hand pass away. Boat tries to get a boot to it, didn't do so. And then just kicking it off the ground was Mays. Found a little bit of territory, got them inside 50, the power, still knocking it forward. Hardly had a clear possession here, and they're inside 50. Kick comes to the top of the square. Dixon trying to get back. Howe wants to see it through for a point. No, he keeps it in. Instead, keeps it in and kicks it out of bounds on the foot. You just have to take that through, don't you? You would think so. There's no issue with deliberate there. Just you almost just, just run through. He's yeah. down on the pump, someone in the vicinity. Now that uh, Port Adelaide get a second look at it. One of the left footer with the free kick. He's 45 out from goal, starts his approach next to a couple of the plastic chairs. He's going to centre things up. Where are the flyers for Port Adelaide? They all run underneath it. Front and centre is Wines. Couldn't get a boot to it. Instead, flung out the hand pass just to the top of the square. Dixon goes in, picks it up one-handed. Got the kick away. Mays out of nowhere snaps. Misses everything. Out of bounds on the full. 17 minutes played, final term on Grandstand AFL. The margin, 23 points. Hawks asking a few questions in this final quarter. So Hardwick from the back pocket, long out to Greaves. He wants to try and claim the mark, and the umpire says play on, and then he steps over the boundary line. So throw in half forward for Port. And Damon Greaves, the Hawthorne redhead, he won't be happy with that. Boundary throw in right half forward for Port Adelaide. Still at 23 points. Hawks with the last four from the throw in winds. Hand pass releases. Carl Amon through half forward. Loads up from 55 out. It's across the face. And Dixon reads it superbly. Gets himself to the drop and marks right in front of the behind post. The frost was a bit stiff there. He had yeah. good positioning on him. The kick was just bad enough for it actually just floated. Almost in the opposite way you'd think from that left footer in the angle. Amon was running and Dixon obviously was facing the ball. Frost had his back to it. Approaching time on in the last to just about slam the door shut. Thud. There it goes. Through on the angle and Dixon kicks his third of the night. And just snuffs out whatever Hawthorne comeback they were trying to create. Ends the run of four consecutive goals. Port 10 8 68, Hawthorne 5 9 39. The margin returned to 29 Port Adelaide's way. 19 played in the final term. Meanwhile, the game at the Melbourne Cricket Ground across town, 17 minutes into the last. Carlton by seven over Fremantle.
I think you know it called just the uh, I think that was the seal I think everyone here as I look across and now the Hawthorne supporters are starting to make their way out uh, but they just needed uh, to get another one there just to keep their slim hopes alive because the crowd was up at about before when uh, because he put it through and they thought they were a sniff ball back in the middle 10 8 68 the power 5 9 39 the Hawks 19 minutes played in the final term here on Grandstand AFL. Perfect bounce. Laying it down and coming off the wing there was Howe. Howe, his soccer ricochet to Phillips, who might have been tackled a little too long there, and the umpire says that's a free kick. Hanging on for a little too long. Phillips to centre-half forward, Newcomb. Went the spoil in the end. It'll fall to his own advantage. He kept going, Newcomb. Just got tackled at the last moment. Rosie, hand pass to Alir. Alir off his left. Only finds Hardwick, and it's coming back inside 50 for the Hawks. Hardwick. There's one option laterally. Steady kicks to about 30 out directly in front. Kaczynski the fly. Couldn't take the mark at ground level. Mops up. Now Moore. Scrubbers a kick away. Warpool, hand pass over the top, O'Brien gathers goals. Good work by the Hawks. 6 9 45 Hawthorne, 10 8 68 Port Adelaide, 20 minutes play final term on Grandstand AFL. It was crafty work by uh, Dylan Moore just to scrap it and get it forward, and good composure again by Warpool. Not to blaze away and hack it over his shoulder. I like that he's composed enough. Tim O'Brien charging back in towards the goals. Gets a nice little Joe the Goose over the top. Sort of a little, little bit too, little too late. Spit that out, Lids. But uh, nice to see uh, Tim O'Brien get on the scoreboard. Colin sent a text message through of his fish, Lids. He's caught. Yeah, it was good to see a lure in there. and It wasn't caught off a springer off the bank, so that's that's good. Jeez, this is very technical. <laughs> What's <was> that? <laughs> Not sure. <laughs> Not sure that went out on air. We just got a bit of feedback in our headphones, which caught Beach by surprise. Back to 23 points. Port Adelaide's way. Lies it down the boat. He kicks out towards the wing <laughs> for the target. Knocked away towards the boundary line by Scrimshaw. It'll go out of play. City side of the ground. A throw in 70 out from the Port goal. I thought I was at home playing cod and someone scared the shit out of me. Oh, Jesus. 22 travelled. It actually happens. <laughs> From the boundary throw in. Spills down to Newcomb. He's kicked smothered. Here's Boat. Hand pass out the back of the stoppage. Only ends up with Mitchell, though. Away to Scrimshaw to Warpool. In close. Gives it to Greaves. He's mowed down. Hawks under the pump. There's a whistle on the play. A free kick. It's going Hawthorne's way. And Greaves was pushed in the back. Drilled in the tackle. Free kick for Damon Greaves, half back for the Hawks. 22 played final term, Port by 23. I was about to say, surely this kick has to be somewhat aggressive, come more corridor, bring more players into it. He it found goes. Segler straight down the wing, so it wasn't quite as aggressive as you were hoping, BJ. Segler kicks inside 50. The target, Phillips, should have taken the mark in the end as he was sliding on his chest. Spun around in the tackle ball. His kick went nowhere. Port Adelaide with the numbers. Leonard just got the kick away on his left. It hugs the boundary line. In fact, too much. Out of bounds on the full. Downstairs, Jess Webster. I'm, I'm so sorry to scare you guys. I actually dropped my mic. So... <laughs> 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 I, I can't stop laughing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Long ball inside 54. Hawthorne. Bergman went up. Couldn't complete the mark. Spills to O'Brien. His hand pass went straight to Lysett and he chucks it. On the boot, kicks inside the centre square. Off hands from Segler, trying to mark. Spills to Jaff. 1-2 with Frost. Back to Jaff. Just wrong foot. Power Pepper, happy to take him on. Then kicks a 60-metre drop punt deep forward. Reeling it in, Kaczynski. Lyson looks certain to take the mark because he put up his left foot and dragged it in one-handed. Twenty-three points. Yep. Chip in a chair. Still a chance? You're, you're backing them for me, you reckon? No, this, I'm saying there's still a chance. What, what, what's the... Uh... He's a 45% accuracy this year from his shots at goal, Cozzy. So he's got to pop this through first. 25 out, just left of centre. Moves in. Misses. Oh. More minutes than goals, Misses. and they're a chance. Yep. He's behind for Kaczynski to the near side. 
Port by 22 points. He should have done better from, uh, from there. Carlton by eight points, by the way, as we tick into time on at the MCG final term. Eight points over Frio. The power by 22 here. Time on in the last. Long kick out of defence. Hawks with the numbers at ground level again. It's now a chance for Hardy. And I'll put his teammate under all sorts of pressure. Mobbed immediately was Mitchell. Ball turned over. Boat squeezes out a kick around the boundary line. Knocked away. Good spoil there by Hardwick on Georgiades. And he forces the boundary throw in 70 from goal. Marking up way says hi, gent. Sean Burgoyne to full forward. Like it. <laughs> yeah. Get him a goal. Yeah, give it to him. Thrown yeah. back into play. Now the Hawks with a chance to run away through Jaff, who's going the wrong way, but he's got pace to burn everyone. And then kicks over the head of Hardwick, who has to try and keep this in. He does at right half back. Good smother though by Georgiades. He didn't give up the chase. Motlock receives the ball. Hand pass inboard to Georgiades, who kept on running. Hand pass over the top to Dixon. And Dixon kicks the goal. That's his fault. 25 minutes played, final term. One of the best passages of play, all set up by Georgiades' desperation. 11 8 74 Port Adelaide, 6 10 46 the Hawks. Or you probably go back to the source, and that was Gias. Missed kick on Hardwick, put it over the top of his head. He did a good job. Gias to find some time and space and had the wide one. And uh, just missed that kick, which put him under the pump, and he came inside, actually tried to kick on his left, which some people should just keep their left in the closet and not get it out. And uh, Balanced leg, you reckon? Yeah, that's right. And just... Uh, that caused the turnover, and it was a good bit of play, as he made mention. Georgiades followed up, ground level, bit of handball chain, finding a, a goal from the top of the square for Big Dixon. 15 points, two at the MCG, so Carlton have kicked the last couple after scores were level at three-quarter time. Carlton by 15 over Frio. Here it's 28 points, Port Adelaide's way. Uh, Sean Burgoyne was in the forward line moments ago. He's still there. He's still in the forward line for the Hawks. And the Waning moments of this game, time on the last. O'Meara wins it in the middle, but going the wrong way. Hand pass to Scrimshaw, wax it in the middle to Shields. Hand pass to Jaff, back to Hardwick. Kicks out to the outer wing. Houston chasing after the footy, runs onto it. Looks into the middle of the ground for the power. Dangerous ball. Scrimshaw takes an intercept mark. Lays off the hand pass to Phillips. Phillips loads up, kicks inside 50. Spoil comes at the back for Port Adelaide. Through Burn Jones, gave it to O'Leary, went without it. Burgoyne picks up. Burgoyne gets his feet free. <laughs> he snaps but misses. Gee, everyone watching, listening at the ground across the country <laughs> wanted to see him kick that. Sean Burgoyne with a behind. And the margin closes to 27 points. What was Tom Jonas doing? Get out of the way. Yeah, go. Just, just, just that, pull up a little. Yeah. I thought he was going to just sell the candy and go back on his left. Maybe showing his age. <laughs> McKenzie with the kick in. A high kick. On that side of defensive 50. Pack forms. A couple of big punches. The ball falls away of O'Meara. He's tackled immediately. Mays locks it in over the top. And a ball up it will be. Uh, Burgoyne, 301 goals, 184 behind in his 400 games. What's his biggest bag he's kicked? Can't find it. He kicked uh, 39 goals in his second or third season, so he, he was a prolific goal kicker at Port Adelaide. It's probably from the midfield or something. So <laughs> yeah. sure, Back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> he's got two bags of five. Nice. Boke inboard to Burton, who takes the mark, just behind centre wing. 27 minutes played in the final term here on Grandstand AFL. 30. Well, in fact, it's a... 37 point lead, so I'm just doing my maths. 27 point really? lead. Going well. 47 and 74 got me confused there. We can see the cogs turning over here, looking up at the scoreboard. Just, uh. So I'd written down something different, so I'd confused myself out of it. Toss back into play. Burn Jones misses that one. He's able to mop up his mess out the back. Hand pass. Comes the way of Wines, who's pushed off his kick. Still got plenty of penetration on it. Dixon might have had an arm held. No, yes. In fact, it's going to go to Marshall in front of him. Marshall will kick for goal. No, it is going to go to Dixon for that arm hold. 
full-time at the MCG, Carlton by 16 points over Fremantle, so Carlton by 16, 12-8-80 over the Dockers, 8-16-64, we'll have all the wash-up in the post-game. Terrence, the reflection of the decision is when all the players turn to the umpire and no one's like, whose free kick is it? Yeah. Dixon to line up, he'll start his approach from outside 50, already has four this evening, Big Charlie, looking for his fifth. Lays into it. Umpire does a bit of work to his right, and it's across the face for one behind. 11 9 75 the power. 6 11 47 the Hawks. Late in this final turn. Long kick straight down the pipe from Hardwick. Up goes Aaliyah, tries to spoil it away down to Burgoyne. His hand pass ends up with Mitchell O. He gives it to Shields, kicks for Burgoyne out to meet it. Jonas attacks the footy, went without it. Burgoyne one way to the other, hand pass to Jaff. Jaff runs a circle, gives it back to O'Meara. O'Meara shoots, goal word, he's got it. Three early misses, he finds the major opening here. And the crowd just coming to life every time Sean Burgoyne touches the footy with a late stint in the front half. It's one back for Hawthorne late. The margin returns to 22 points. So Porter 11.975, Hawthorne 7.11.53. Half hour mark, final term. Just repeating full time at the MCG. Carlton by 16 over Freo. Would have been nice to uh, see Shawnee be able to just get into a bit of space there and wheel and drop that one through. But you can just see everyone sifts off when, he's, uh, when he has got the footy. It's something he's been able to do his whole career. Put other players into space. He did that with Giath and then uh, handball back. And O'Meara, nice finish in the standing start. He's won three tonight, so he could have had himself a fairly handy day as well. 30 minutes played, final term on Grandstand AFL. 22 points the margin in favour of Port Adelaide. Kick from the centre square, falls in the lap of Amon. Hand passes immediately to Mays, who's dragged off his kick. Still got it inside fifth in the villain of the evening. Rosie runs into an open goal and kicks it. And celebrates quietly with a few of his Hawthorne friends that he's made this evening. 31 minutes played, final term. The margin back to 28 points in favour of the power. He has some special things, doesn't he? Oh, that was class coming through. Like just front and square, just hit it at pace. Just to read it so well off the hands. Could have given the old Joe the goose to Dixon the goal square probably again for his second easy one of the quarter. But uh, he did something similar twice early in the match where he come through. I think one he just missed. But just to, just to read it, impact it, and then to finish. Right spot, right time. Got the pace. Yeah, he's got a real turn of foot, hasn't he? When he needs it. He puts the puts burners on. Away he goes. <laughs> It's where you look at the players to come in and that speed then, you know, the old butters, just more of the class and the, his toughness and his all-round game. But then Orazio is a forward too, so they've it, it got a bit to come in. 28 points the margin. Burgoyne's gone to the goal square as they've all pressed up, but it's Porto get the centre break. Spills down to Mays. He chucks it on the boot and kicks one. It was about 10 seconds from centre bounce to goal. Two quick ones for Port. Sam Mays puts it out to 34 points. He closed the show last week, doing it again tonight, 33 minutes into the final term. Well, they didn't learn from that one, did they? The Hawks allowed nearly the exact same blueprint. Straight out of the middle, Mays onto it. And that was him coming up from the square, right? So Scrimshaw just caught behind. Did you get a body on him? Yeah, just that's it, a body or just get goal side as soon as a forward gets goal side of their opponent, they know they're a sniff then, so you've got a hard time catching them. Older blokes like us back in the day, Leeds, just nah, keep them in front of keep you. Them in front of you. You, had, you had the turn of pace to catch them. I just, yeah, just to try sat, and fox them a bit. Yeah, just, just to sag off them. <laughs> <laughs> Give a little lead up just not to be exposed out the back. Neither team kicked a goal for the first 12 or 14 minutes of this quarter. We've had seven since. So come in a flurry late. Boke. Hand pass to Burton. Burton over the top to Frederick. And half back here for Port Adelaide. Shrugs the tackle. Got it to Burn Jones. To Boak. All by hand. He kept on running. Kicks inside. Is it time for one more? Dixon flew. Couldn't take the mark. Frost checks his kick at the last moment. Looking for Shields. Bergman. Boundary line's a win for him. And he gets it there. 
follows up at ground level after the initial spoil. Ball in, 60 around from the Port Adelaide goal. 34 points the margin. He did get out to 47 at one stage and they were able to pull it all the way back into 22. It was as close as Hawthorne got in their comeback effort. On a night, Sean Burgoyne becomes just the fifth man in VFL AFL history to pass the 400 mark. But he'll do so on the wrong side of the result. As the power make it three in a row, Port get themselves to 11 and four. A special night, a special milestone for Sean Burgoyne, but it comes in a 34-point defeat. Port Adelaide, too good for the Hawks. Port. It's the longest win streak in the game at the moment. It's about as good as it gets in this hellish competition. Boy, it's tough to string them together. Port and Brisbane with three in a row, the longest active streaks in the game. They play Melbourne next week at Adelaide Oval, followed by games against St Kilda and Collingwood in their next three. The night really about Sean Burgoyne. It started, of course, with Kevin Bartlett, then Michael Tuck, Brent Harvey, Dustin Fletcher, and now Sean Burgoyne is the fifth man in the history of the game to reach the 400 mark. He had a guard of honour featuring a number of former teammates and former opponents. He shook hands with a number of the Port Adelaide players before the bounce of the ball starting in the defensive 50. He played really the majority of the last quarter in the forward line, finished with a behind, and both teams are making their way towards the Hawthorne race to give him a guard of honour. The footy itself, Hawthorne kicked the first goal inside the opening four minutes. Port Adelaide the next nine to take care of business. They led by 47 early in the third term. Hawthorne kicked the next four, but they never got within 22 points. It seesawed in the final term, and Port Adelaide kicked the last couple to make it 34 points in the finish. 39-87 Port Adelaide, Hawthorne 7-11-53. The goal kickers, Charlie Dixon with four, two for Bergman, two for Marshall, and then one to Georgiades, Georgiades, Rosie, Mays, and Frederick. Two for Bruce, one for Warple, one for Howe, O'Brien, and Kaczynski. We might just see if we can pick this up. Sean Burgoyne chatting to Channel 7. In a little mini club with those guys. The first Indigenous player to reach 400 games. Shawnee, you're an inspiration. <laughs> you're an inspiration to Indigenous men and, and women across the nation. How do you, how do you sum, sum that up? <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty big when you talk like that. But um, yeah, whether I, you know whether I can inspire young kids to to reach for a goal and try to get their pinnacle and make the most of it, that's that's uh, um, I'm happy with that. But <laughs> here comes my kids. Your rugrats. Uh, yeah, it's good. But yeah. 
<laughs> What's your secret as well behind 400 games, other than the pregnancy pillow, which you've heard so much about? But at the end of your career at Port Adelaide, hey Ames, <laughs> um, you know, Hawthorne would have been wrapped if they got three years out of you. They've had over a decade, but what do you put it down to? Oh, I think when you surround yourself with good people and, and great medical advice and great people who have great faith in you, um, you can gives you a lot of confidence to, to chase your dreams and, and keep playing footy at the highest level. So great people in and around Hawthorne and yeah, I've surrounded myself with those people and you know, yeah, I just couldn't you know, couldn't be in better hands. And these guys, your squad, <laughs> yeah. Amy, you've been there since day one. The boys saw your stats sheet from his debut back at the Anzac Cup. But how proud of you? Uh, how proud are you of Sean and everything that he's achieved? Uh, Abby, I've only just stopped crying. Oh, don't make me cry again. Don't make me um, cry. I'm just so proud of him. So proud of him on and off the field. Um, just a role model to so many, and I, we love him to death. Congratulations, Sean. I'll get you. Let you yeah. go and enjoy uh, thank, it. Thank you to the fans for coming out as well. Thank you. Sean Burgoyne chatting with Abby Holmes. The two teams lined up in, the, in front of the Hawthorne race and Sean embraces his family. A family hug with his four kids alongside him, all various ages, and his wife there as well as she tries to just dart off towards the right as his two former, or in fact, one former teammate in Liam Shields and then Travis Boak. Of course, the current captain of Port Adelaide, the two teams lined up in a, in, in a beautiful touch, a nice piece of synergy. Port Adelaide Premiership player in 2004, triple Premiership player with the Hawks. It'll be Boken Shields to carry Sean Burgoyne off Docklands after game 400. His career started here back in April of 2002. 400 games later, over 7,000 days in between, four Premierships. And Sean Burgoyne is put back on his feet, his family around him. Plenty of photographers snapping away as he makes his way off the plane arena. What a champion of the game, one of only five to have reached the 400 game milestone. His Hawthorne teammates follow him, the winners Port Adelaide, back to the other end of the ground to sing the song. A 34 point win for the power. Sean Burgoyne, 400 games in the books. Brett Delidio and Brendan Goddard sum it all up for us on Grandstand AFL. Oh, not much to sum up, is there, really? Jeez. Well, I okay. hope so, mate. We've gone for a little while. Yeah, I know. That's, the, that's what I was just realising. So where do we, where do we start? <laughs> I mean, just, just quickly on that, Pedro, I mean, you've obviously played you know, 300 games, big milestone games. What, what is that sort of moment like when you get chaired off at the end of the game? Uh, well, I'm not sure because that was for 400. Yeah, um, <laughs> you've had similar, you know. <laughs> You know where I met him. Yeah, mate. I just, um, oh, I don't know. It's a bit of a surreal moment. I just, I don't know. I was probably a little bit different. I didn't, I didn't really care. <laughs> it was just a number to me. I was just filthy. We lost the game in the end because um, it was against Lids Old Mob, GWS, Pretzel Gate. Sort of super remembered for, <laughs> not for my three hundred. <laughs> uh, yeah. So no. Yeah, kind of surreal moment. Um, there would be good pictures, and the good thing about Shawnee, like he's got f four kids to share it with. I had two of my girls with me, but. That was a uh, special moment. That's only one of the pictures that are up on the wall for myself is walking off walking off, or walking onto the ground uh, with my girls in that game and my last game of footy, so that was special. So he'll, he'll cherish that forever. Um, yeah, but it's, yeah, for him, fifth ever player, first Indigenous player, you know, that's 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 pretty special. Like, mm. You know, r really rare. Yeah, that's uh, the percentages. I, was, I think I was like in something like in the top 1% or something, or 1% of the players that play 300. These percentages mm. must be like point zero something or other. So, um, yeah, no, it's quite surreal. But it will have some memories and footage and stuff that you look back with the kids and be uh, fond memories. So we've now lived through three in relatively recent times. I know even the game's changed a lot from the start of the careers of uh, Burgo and Fletcher Harvey compared to the end of their careers, but all three of them got to 400. Is it something do you think we'll see more or less going forward? Uh, it's hard to know, isn't it? Like, I, I, mm. I don't think it'll... You'd have to have some freak who comes in. Well, not a freak, but just a, a really handy player that goes to a, a team. Not unlike Joel Selwood, you know, comes in and playing a successful team, so you're playing constantly, playing finals. But you've got to have durability like Shawnee Burgoyne has. 
Uh, or or, or like Boomer was still or flying. Boomer, yeah, Boomer Fletch was... limped over the line, but yeah. there's very few that are like Sean and Boomer, yeah. or I think will be. that. Yeah. Someone said to me the other day, a friend of mine, saying, well, Dusty, they reckon, might be a chance, because he, he's mm. contracted still for another three or four <laughs> years. I only missed eight, eight or nine games. I only had missed eight or nine games. Mm. Albeit we didn't play a lot of finals early with, with him, but he's yeah. played a lot lately. He's, he's more likely to lose interest than I mean, him. He's going to die for his yeah. Well, if they yeah, don't continue to keep winning and being uh, you know, competitive, I think it would be like, oh, well, we'll just... Mm. Gone, but, yeah. yeah. Oh, you thought you know, Buddy would continue to play a heap more, but he's uh, had hard luck with uh, with injuries as well. So it's you just got to be durable, don't you? And mm. you, then you've got to be a good side that's playing finals consistently, I suppose. And like, like a, a, you know, play for predominantly a Melbourne team because they travel less. So you, you know, the interstate teams, have, I think, have got up against it because they travel each week. Yeah. I think that shortens it's your like career. Like Dave Mundy. <laughs> I don't know how he's that's done it. Yeah, for so long. Uh, Matty Pavlich, so yeah. a few that are over there that have done it. But we look it, at the Eagles. They play a lot of finals. They haven't got a 300-gamer. Yeah, yeah there yeah. you go. So, Shannon Hearns, just, he's not far mm, away, is he? Is he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So And, I, like, the game's more demanding than it ever has been, hasn't it? So... Um, the difficult times now because of COVID, but in normal circumstances, the demands on players, the time that's spent at club uh, is more than ever. But again, there's always that fine balance. I think the older teams do it better where they trust the, the players to get more time away from the club and all that kind of thing. So it could do, it could arguably go full circle. So we may see it because it might go all mm. the, almost like because of mental health and to keep guys fresh mentally, all that kind of thing that you spend less time at the footy club, the time you do is really quality time and then therefore you could arguably prolong guys' careers because of that. And th- those guys are going to be more important, aren't they? Well, you look at someone like LeBron James and I, we had Nat Fife on, I think, late last year and he said how he's modelled a lot of his training program on what um, LeBron's done later in his career and essentially trying to, to be able to do it for longer periods and well into your 30s where we probably look at it nowadays that... You know, once you're over 30s, it's one-year contracts and who knows how long sort of guys can go on for. You've got Berg on at 38. I wonder if we, even though our game is physical and it's obviously very demanding, whether that, just through sports science and other things, that we can stretch our careers a little bit longer and we'll see it a little bit more. But I mean, so, uh, it's just There is that part of it, but just because our game is more demanding than any other sport, I think. Mm. Isn't it? Because of the all-round game, you need speed, endurance, strength... And one, of them, hard, one of them usually caves in, doesn't it? Yeah, it's hard to hold on that for longer periods. And, and LeBron's like, you know, genetically African-American, you know, all that kind of things. He's genetically just a freak as well. Yeah. So he's got, you know, so that's... And basketball being a different game, low, more contact as such. Harder on the, the joints, yeah. hence why you see them literally icing up there, just their knees and stuff for most games, every game. Mm. So, yeah, it's just... It's a good argument, but it's almost just like you... I don't think... There's right or wrong answers because yeah. you don't, you just don't know what it's going to look like in ten years. Play another ten years now as the midi sub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is it is pretty cool that there's only five games ever where someone's reached four hundred yeah. and one of them was tonight. And who knows when we'll get the next one? But touched on it as part of the pregame that uh, Monday Betts and Pendlebury are the three that mathematically, if they played you know, large periods of footy between now and the 2023 season, um, that they could get there. And you probably think more so. Pendlebury and, and Mundy than, than probably Eddie. Um, but, yeah, that's it shows that it's it's not an every year thing, even if they, they think, play so all of next year, they wouldn't get there. And three of those have been in the last decade. Yeah, which is interesting. Mm. So, but therefore, they started their careers, yeah. In a different game. Two, mm. two, two and a half decades ago, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So where they started to where they finished, but now guys, you know, they're starting five years ago where they can do it or... Yeah, so interesting discussion to have. Do you think he still uh, keeps playing out the season or is a big build-up to get to, to 400 and then it's sort of like, oh, well, I've achieved that now and with the season's probably petering out. What do you thought? I, I, I get the feeling, having known him and, meet, and meeting Sean and spending a bit of time with him, that he'd be like, well, I don't want to back out on my uh, teammates now. Yeah. I'll mm-hmm. see it through. A few whispers. If, if, I'm, if I'm good enough. A few whispers that we might see him next year. Really? Wow. Is that what you're hearing? Okay. Yeah. Or well, th- even, even, yeah. Was it the Gold Coast that offered him two years end of last year? Was it the year before that now? Yeah, year that they, um, they came with him with a couple of years to make sure he'd get to 400, and in the end, Hawthorne were happy to keep him, and he was playing yeah, that, good that's enough just, Yeah, that's just to uh, thinking long-term, just not letting him go to Gold Coast, and he spends the next 10 <laughs> years there. Well, it's in- interesting that um, 
Clarkson has phased out a lot of those guys. So, mm-hmm. you know, he's happy to let Jordan mm-hmm. Lewis go. He's happy to let Sam Mitchell go. But Bur- Burgoyne has been that constant over the last six, seven years out of those old guys that he's phased out that he's, he's wanted to be a part of the group. So that probably speaks to... What, uh, yeah. what Clarkson thinks of him as well. I think it's his indigenous uh, connections that he has with all the, the boys that come through. I think you and the, playing with all the, the boys that I have over the journey, when you've got an elder uh, indigenous uh, boy playing, then you, you, the, the younger fellas see it really connect a lot quicker and they, and they understand it because they've got that arm, that father figure around them. So I reckon that's probably one of the reasons that uh, he has spent so much time there for now in the last three or four years, but He's, uh, yeah, I think... That and they don't, I don't, yeah, I think they just don't want to let him go. Well, why would you? Yeah, yeah. so, so keep him there. He's got he'll, respect. He'll be in the coaching and probably play uh, multiple roles once he actually finishes playing. And he'll go on to, if it's there, or he maybe just work his... Mm-hmm. So being such a, a good person, human, and well-rounded person, he could end up at AFL working with them and the Indigenous part. Like he's, I think the opportunity is endless for Sean. Oh, I was just about to say the same thing. I feel like every single industry of the footy world, and leads up on our show on Sundays, we talk a lot about um, in recent times and with the Willie Rioli stuff, the fact that they've cut down a lot on Indigenous liaison officers, which yep. are important roles at the club. Essendon have one um, at the moment, but unfortunately I think they're one of only 50% of clubs that, uh, that have continued with the position post-COVID and clubs... Um, you know, other clubs have basically chosen to use a senior player to try and do that role, which is obviously has its own problems. But you look at Sean and you go, he could work in a footy department. If you wanted to commentate, there'd be people lining up to sort of have him in his services in the box. Um, if you wanted to coach, the big problem that Aussie Rules football has too is, you know, there's 13% of the um, playing population are Indigenous. And yet the percentage of players that go into coaching is almost less than 1%. So they're not able to transfer former Indigenous players from the game into the coaching box in the same way. So um, he's a guy that you speak to everyone in the footy world and they'd be happy to sort of take a piece of, of Sean Bergwijn once he finally does finish playing. But 400 games tonight for him. Uh, becomes the fifth player and the, the first Indigenous man ever to reach the milestone. Uh, the footy itself, Port won by 34 points, 39.87. They've just made their way off the ground and we might just get a little listen into what's happening in their rooms. They're ready to sing the song. A 34-point win, 39.87 over the Hawks, 7-11-53. <laughs> So a 34-point win for Port. They led by 10 at quarter time, 42 at the half, 29 at three-quarter time, and 34 in the finish. So they're 11-4 and four on the season. They're 2-4 and four against top eight teams, which is what we always sort of... or There's always questioned about Port Adelaide, but they're 9-0 and zero now against bottom 10 teams. So they front up, they beat the teams they should. They're generally in pretty competitive games, <laughs> leads against uh, the better yeah. teams in the competition. They'll get Dersma back next week when you sort of watch them. You think, oh, they desperately need a little bit of zip on the outside. Fantasia's a few away. Butters is back training. So all of a sudden, it feels like there's a little more optimism around Port. Yeah, I think that's what they're, they're lacking is that one, those guys bring back some speed, but they're also creativity as well around the footy. I think they, they almost light them up a little bit, don't they, and really get the ball you know, coming back through the corridor. They take that extra handball and break open the game, uh, Butters especially, um, but we're, gonna, we're not going to miss him for probably the whole year um, if, you know, what we read is true, but Ders- Dersma gives him that, you know, that extra role on the wing him and Amon play those wing roles really well which is good for Port and, and Fantasia's that crafty player that gets up forward and he stays at home more so, which allows Motlop to be that conduit up and down in the middle of the ground as the extra midfielder Whereas we saw tonight, him doing that allowed Hawthorne just to have nearly a plus two behind the footy, which didn't make for great viewing for all of us. But, um, you know, it's, it's those sort of players come back into the side. They, they're certainly better, and they, but they're just sort of biding their time at the moment, aren't they, until they actually get them back. And, you know, they're 11-4. and four. You can't fault their, the games they have won. It's probably the games that they've lost that uh, we, we pick the eyes out of. What do you reckon, Beach? Where do you sit on them? Mm. Seeing them... Are close tonight. I don't think they're in great form, and they they really knuckled down last week uh, to get the win against Sydney. So that was a pretty good win. 
Sydney obviously been a little bit up and down, but their, their best has been good enough to beat anyone. So they take that, but yeah, they're just it's lacking a bit of that confidence, just the ability to and ball movement in particular. I said Hawthorne instigated it a fair bit and had those numbers behind the ball, but then Port didn't really throw anything around or from the coach's box or any moves to man it up just to see how it went. And that was kind of the trap, I think, because they were always in front on the scoreboard. So it was like, oh, well, it's kind of working, so why should we change it? But, mm. yeah, so it's uh, it is doing enough and they're not in great form, but they've got time to do that with, with players coming back. Carlton buys 16 points over Fremantle at the MCG, so Freo missed their chance to jump into the top eight. The Giants are there tonight. Port Adelaide are well entrenched. They're 11-4, a 34-point win over Hawthorne. Let's get into the Port Adelaide rooms. Carl Amon is having another career year, approaching 100 games, and he joins us on Grandstand AFL. Uh, Carl, congratulations. Thanks, boys. Thanks for having me. I imagine a special night to be a part of, firstly, given the occasion with Sean Burgoyne going through the 400 barrier, just five of these games in AFL history, and you were part of one of them tonight. Yeah, look, it was a special night, and um, I guess for myself as a, as a young Indigenous boy coming through the system and, you know, watching Sean, you know, as I grow up, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's special to be a part of his 400th game, and, you know, the first Indigenous player to do it, you know, is an inspiration not only for me, but... I know for all the young Indigenous boys coming through the system and, you know, it's a massive achievement for sure. Talk us through a little bit more of that, Carl. What are some of the, the qualities, I guess, that, that you admire in him? Uh, I think, you know, obviously his football does that does the talking, but I think, you know, the, the person he is off the field just, you know, really sums him up. You know, he's so caring and, you know, whenever we have Indigenous camps and all that, you know, he's always getting around the younger boys. Um, and I think that just sums him up. He's, he's a great, you know, he's a tremendous footballer, and the career that he's had is outstanding. Um, and I think everything speaks for itself. But I think, for me, what Sean is off the field is, you know, is just a quality person. It's a, it's a pretty cool occasion. I mean, to, to go to past 400, I noticed even before the bounce, a few of your Port Adelaide teammates were running up to him, giving him a few hugs and uh, shaking his hand even before the bounce. Did, did Ken address it at all with you? And did you guys do much on the fact that he was breaking the milestone tonight and, and what the occasion would mean for Port Adelaide as the opposition? Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, even for us, when we celebrate milestone games, you obviously want to get the win. So we knew Hawthorne were going to come out pretty fierce and, you know, we had a real intention of, you know, bringing the heat early and, and trying to take the emotion out of the game. And, um, you know, I think we did that pretty well. I think, you know, the, the first quarter, we, we really brought the pressure. And, you know, while it was still pretty even on the scoreboard, um, I think we came out in that second quarter and really applied a lot of pressure, which sort of brought the emotion out of the game. No, uh, Carl, Brenny Goddard, well done tonight, mate. Well done on your own form and just on your own development, mate. You're spending a bit more time as an inside mid, maybe with a, a couple of guys out that would otherwise go through there. How are you finding that role and is that an area that you uh, have really worked on? Yeah, certainly. I think, um, you know, in this pre-season, I, I spent a little bit more time in there and um, obviously at the moment we've got a few injuries. So, um, you know, obviously the wing's my main position, you know, which I love, but obviously enjoying getting some more time inside and, and develop, de- developing my game and, um, you know, having the attributes to, to go outside and inside. Um, you know, that's where I think I can bring something else to the table and, um, yeah, as I said, really enjoy my time inside. And just on uh, tonight's game in particular, did you feel like the tactics from Hawthorne, particularly behind the ball, and when you guys won the ball, having that plus one or sometimes at times, sorry, at times, uh, having plus two, did that stifle your ball movement? You struggled to kind of get through that at times? Yeah, a little bit. We knew going into the game that you know, they're a, sort of a, a marking defence and they like to come off their opponent and, and try and take those marks. And um, I think early on we sort of had a plus one at stoppage, which we're trying to, trying to um, use to the best of our ability. And but I think sometimes going forward, you know, we just need to make, make it messy or, um, or rather and um, just try and get the ball on the ground to sort of try and eliminate those defenders thought we did that all right at times, but um, I think we just need to get a little bit more consistent in that. Uh, Carl, Brett Lydia here, mate. Um, I just want to know, from, from your point of view, what does your best footy look like and how far off that are you at the moment? Yeah, I think, um, you know, we shut it in our first half, you know, I think when we apply a lot of pressure and, you know, we lock the ball in our front half, um, you know, that's our best footy and uh, I think we certainly showed that in the, in the first half, but... Um, obviously, you know, there were patches in the second half that we didn't get, but, you know, I think once, you know, we start building some form going into the later half of the year, and, you know, we get a few boys back from the sample and, 
um, we can really, you know, play that pressure footy. Um, I think that's that's the best way we play footy, and, and hope going forward, hopefully, we can build to that consistently. And uh, Ollie Wines, mate, he's putting together some sort of year, mate. Uh, his chances, and is he letting you know that he's probably a chance for the brown lot? <laughs> yeah, Ollie's having a super year, and um, you know he's obviously leading our boys inside inside the midfield, and um, no, he's not he's not talking about anything like that. Ollie's a real down to earth man, and um, you know he just wants to get the win. You know he'll put his body on the line for us, and he'll be in and under every every week, and that's what we like about him. But yeah, he's having a super year. Carl, what's it like? being in Melbourne at the moment, obviously the team station here for, well, you probably don't know how long at this stage. Um, have you been able to go home and see family? Do all the Victorian guys get to, to go and have dinner with their folks or people they haven't seen for a long time? What sort of conditions are you living under at the moment? Yeah, for sure. So I think we came over on Wednesday and it was a, a pretty quick day and it all happened pretty quickly. But yeah, I think it's an opportunity for, especially the Victorian blokes, you know, we've all caught up with our families, you know, whether that be at the hotel or we're going out and getting dinner or having a coffee, but um, at this stage we're going going back to Adelaide tomorrow. So um, you know, hopefully we can get back and, and spend a few weeks there. And uh, we're really looking forward to Thursday night. You know, it's going to be a quality contest against a quality side against Melbourne. So um, we're going to recover well, go home tomorrow, and, and look forward to next week. And he getting some troops back anytime soon. I know Xavier Dersma thinks he's only one week away. Zach Butters is running again. Any update on that? Yeah, Durs was touch and go this week, so I think he's going to play sample. Um, and then Zach Butters played his first game back um, today in the, in the sample, back in Adelaide, and, and went really well and kicked two guys in the last quarter to, to get us over the line. So um, it's going to be really good to get those younger boys back. You know, they bring so much energy, energy to our side. And, um, you know, especially Zach was in tremendous form before it happened. So hopefully we can get a few numbers back going into the later half of the year. Cool night to be part of. Uh, good signs ahead for Port Adelaide. Three in a row. Appreciate your time, Carl, as always, on Grandstand AFL. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Carl Lamon with us. Uh, he's just becoming a super player too, isn't he? His last couple of years, he's been excellent. Uh, he's up to 94 senior games now and Port Adelaide 34. The, the news around Butters was really doom and gloom a few yeah. weeks back. And then he was back running. I didn't realise he played today. Um, and... That's awesome to think that he's... he's For you, it is. You oh, love him. Only a few, well, that's what they need. I mean, him and Dersma, we've touched on that. that. They're the kind of guys that they need back to give them a little bit on they the They make outside. them fun to watch, don't they? And Farrell going down tonight, I mean, he was trying to sort of fill a hole for them, but um, they don't Rep- have a, a lot of that. To come back. Yes. To his reasonable form. A little bit up and down before getting injured. I think he strung together a good month at the start of the year, but, uh, you know, when they're up and about, he makes them... A better team. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, Hawks tonight. Feels a little up and down. Um, obviously, they had that great win against Sydney. Went down to Launceston. Pretty entertaining game of footy. One we did together uh, against the Bombers. Ultimately, on the wrong side of it. Beat the Giants last week. Which looks like a good win now that the Giants come out and beat Melbourne. And then today, they conceded nine in a row. And really, they had to work their, um, their backsides off to get back in the game from that point on. But if you're a Hawthorne fan driving home, how should you be feeling? Hmm... They've been a lot better the last five, you know, four or five weeks. So I think that's a fair in the cap. Uh, the games look completely different. They've been harder to play against defensively a lot better. Um, so again, there was they got out to a lead tonight, but even so, they made it, you know, quite difficult for Port. It wasn't wasn't what we'd seen earlier in the year where they let teams, in particular Essendon, in round one, and they got belted a couple other times, but let teams literally just run through them and look like a training drill. So. It wasn't wasn't a pretty game. You know, there wasn't much done, I think, to kind of turn the tide. I think we talked about tactically plus one, but there wasn't too many risks taken, even towards the end when they needed to, to try and win the game. They Arguably a sniff. I think we said there was more minutes than there were goals, so they were always a chance. But, um, yeah, they, they've been better, so it's hard. Young, developing team, there's some really good signs. Young, you know, and to think about the number of players there they've still got to come back off long term Sicily in particular is that probably yeah. the number one especially when you put him in that back line Gunston. and then the develop yeah Gunston, Gunston. sorry is forward yeah. so opposite, opposite ends of the ground is pretty important um, more experience too um, and then with the development of these other younger guys Scrimshaw in particular in the half back line uh, a couple of young forwards so yeah look it's it's not all doom and gloom, but it's definitely better than a better position now in the last month than they were, yeah, 
start of the season or going into rounds five, six through that period up to about round ten. What do you reckon they need going forward? If you were in charge of list management there, what would you be looking at come draft time? Oh, depends where they think they're at. When you know where they th- is it four, five, six years down the track? So is it is it almost give up something now to build towards that next premiership? Um, but where do I think forward? I'm you know I'm not. Is it go to the draft to get like legitimate draft a legitimate forward with a low pick, and maybe have I'm I'm not. Sh- it's hard to judge. Kaczynski O'Brien's been around for a long time. I was going to ask the question during the game: Where's O'Brien at with his footy? Because mm. he's just been just about player for how long now? Showing a little bit there. Yeah, been so. Years. You know, I think Kaczynski's going to be a pretty solid player, but get someone to compliment him. So a guy. You know, a draft like you get, you get the King brothers or um, McDonald last year or Hugo Hagen's, you know, a legitimate key forward in a low mm. pick. Um, I think that's a good place to start. Uh, so they've got a couple of key positions to fill too. So then you what look about at Rucks. Their Rucks are really old. Yep. So you look at that. I think Rucks now, it's almost teams are reluctant to take a Ruckman with their low pick in the draft, so it's almost like they, one, try and steal a backup Ruckman from another team. I think that Or they get them in the mid-season or they, this year. Or they get them mm. later in the draft or the mid-season or the pre-season draft to, or the project player, develop a young kid, uh, Sammy Draper type, you know, get him in and then develop him. But um, that's definitely... And then, but I was just thinking more of that key key back position as well. Um, they've got Hardy get in, um, they've got Frost in, but long-term, talking four or five years, are those the guys... Are you going to back in yeah. or... So, yeah, no, interesting, but um, there's enough there to like. Speed. And add a bit more speed. To speed everywhere. Through the midfield in particular yeah. when you've got Mitchell Warple, a kind of like for like. O'Meara. Excuse me, O'Meara's, I think, got a bit more toe than them, but someone else around that mark to fit in there to, to provide that, you know, that X factor. And that, I think that they've, they really haven't had a sustained list build obviously because they've been going for it for so long so, yeah. so they don't have that bank of five six seven top ten draft picks that top they've 20, taken yeah. yeah so i think they've had two first round draft picks in about the last yeah yeah they got years. granger barras uh, last I was year say, we haven't seen enough of day that. So yeah. that, I, didn't, that I, didn't, shows. I didn't see granger barras game last week as well but apparently he's pretty impressive yeah. so is he that guy that he's a bad he's the, the defender yeah. when you when you bring him in Two, three, four years down the track with Sicily in his late twenties in his prime, and yeah. um, then you probably need one other. But the pieces kind of start to come together if they choose. To, that's again if they choose to go down that path, where they just go, no, it's it's going to be. I don't think they will use the words rebuild, mm. but we're we going to go to the draft. Are we going to give up some more experience, you know, Gunston, Mitchell, or something to get, you know, do it respectively? Clarko's done it before. Yep. So. Port by 34 points in the finish over Hawthorne. You said we wouldn't have enough to talk about. There's plenty to get through. No, We've only got extending the, uh, nine minutes to go before off-air. Uh, 34-point win for Port Adelaide over Hawthorne. The votes in the ABC Footballer of the Year. But the Lilio. I've got them. You ready to go, Lids? Yes, yeah, mate. Fire yeah. through them. Yeah. The li- the li- the li- uh, it's Rossi the li- Lyon can never say yeah. his last name. So. <laughs> That's why he doesn't speak to me. <laughs> Rude. Brett. <laughs> He knows. Uh, one vote. Uh, big Charlie up front. I thought he was pretty good on I thought actually Sam Frost did a pretty good job on him, but he ended up with four mm. goals too. So uh, happy with that. Darcy Byrne-Jones for two votes, 29 touches, eight of those intercepts. I thought he was good all night off half back, And relu- not reluctantly, because uh, I was on him a little bit late in the game. Oh, sorry, earlier in the game because of his kicking efficiency. Well, I think so, but uh, everyone almost butchered it tonight. Yeah, everyone did. So he wasn't on his Pat Malone, but... Uh, this bloke, 43 disposals, 23 of them contested, 13 clearances and 7 tackles. Ollie Wines, 3 votes. So, Jeez. 1 Dixon, 2 Burn jones and 3 to Ollie Wines. The votes there in the ABC Footballer of the Year. I think I said it before. I, I said Ollie Wines was my smokey for the Brownlow at the start of the Ooh. season, $81. Mate, he's go. putting together a very, very good season. Mm. The other game tonight, this is how it finished. Carlton and Fremantle across town at the MCG. Silvani tells everyone to calm down. The Blues are going to win back-to-back games. And deliver a huge blow to Fremantle's finals hopes. Carlton win a ripper at the MCG by 16 points. 12-8-80.
to Fremantle, 8 16 64. So Carlton make it two in a row after a 10-point win over Adelaide last week. They now beat Fremantle by 16. This is after the review was launched. They had three straight losses to Sydney, West Coast and GWS. They went to the bye rather uncertain. And now all of a sudden, a couple of victories for David Teague and his Carlton team. It's just the second time this year they've won two in a row. Uh, and they get themselves to, what are they, six wins now? So, yep, they get themselves to six and nine on the Premiership table, Jacob Wiedering joined our team on Grandstand AFL. Here's Clint Wilden. Phil, let's head down into the Carlton Rooms play we've just been talking about. Jacob Wiedering joins us. Congratulations, Jacob. What a tremendous performance from the Blues when you were challenged. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Massive win for the boys. These are the sort of games uh, that we've been in recently. We, we, I guess it's been a couple of kicks either side, and uh, we've been on the receiving end of some losses, and it's just... Uh, I guess off the back of last week, good to get some consistency in. And, uh, yeah, massive win for the boys, massive win. We held tough and, and got the job done. We were talking about the number of games that you've been in this season during the call and just haven't been able to get over the line. And then you finally get that one against Adelaide. Do you feel you can really build on something now? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, it's those little those little wins. Um, I, I guess it's guys stepping up as well. Um, I guess we've relied on Cripper and... Doc and, and a few of the senior boys over the years and uh, it's just good to see a few of the younger boys. Dowie stepped up tonight I thought while she was consistent again the back line played as one and, and the last couple of weeks have been able to keep the uh, I guess the oppo to, to some pretty low scores so it's certainly something we can build on. Uh, I, I haven't looked at ladder. Is it six, seven wins? Um, I'm not too sure. Six so, wins for you uh, now? You're up into 12? Six wins. Yeah, so it's not, I mean uh, we are... Finals is still alive, and, and it's a tight race for everyone. And we've got to win. We, we'll, we'll take it week by week. We've got to win every game, and um, that's what we'll look, look to do. Just curious, because there has been so much pressure on the club and the coach, and then the football department review um, was all announced. How did that change things within Carlton? Has it been any different since that's happened? Because it has seemed, oddly as these things do sometimes occur, that you've been able to turn things around on the field since. Yeah, it's uh, again, it's probably never ideal to have a, a, a review of your football department mid-season, but um, I think it's showing the character of everyone at the club, starting from the top, President, CEO, Brad Lloyd, everyone's been, um, everyone's been uh, very consistent with their messaging, and, and again, Teague's done a terrific job at just keeping our, our minds on the job, and um, the last two weeks have shown the character of the, the team, um, it's just, it's, it's enjoyable football. It's, it's an enjoyable environment. Um, that might, may be ironic considering what is going on, but the boys are tight. It's a, it's a great club to be at, and, um, and we're showing what we can do. Jacob, Sherrod Wellingham here. Great game from uh, a club perspective, but also yours. And we really thought that the Fremantle midfield were putting a lot of pressure on you guys as a back line, um, but you were just able to withstand it throughout the whole game, especially that second half of the game. Talk us through, I suppose how you guys uh, set up and, and what you did to counter... They had 12 more inside 50s in, than you guys. So what was your, I suppose, um, tact in, in, in making the most of those uh, defensive rebound 50s? Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a funny one, Show. It's a good question. Um, I guess, in a way, uh, us defenders in recent years, we, we're used to a few more inside 50s than the usual. And um, I guess off the back of that, our, our craft... Um, as 1v1 backmen and, and the way we defended as a, as a system and as a team was terrific tonight. And it showed the last two weeks we're defending as one. The mid forwards putting on pressure, middies filling the gaps and uh, Jones and myself, Plough, Newey getting the rewards for it with some intercepts. So, um, yeah, they put the pressure on in the third quarter. They were coming and even Rory Lobb, um, he's, he's a very big man, uh, <laughs> big reach and, and took a couple of grabs in the third quarter and, and that sort of got him going. So we, we had to be really disciplined. Reset at three-quarter time, we did that, and, and uh, we got the job done for the for the fans. The, the Sam Walsh goal right at the end to keep the ball in play. I know you're a long way away from where it happened. Did you see it? Does that sort of sum up the desperation that the Blues had tonight? Uh, I'm getting them all with this bump, but um, no, I mean, every shot counts in that last quarter, and again, we're able to kick a winning score, and 
Uh, it's, it's just bloody good to be on the, the winner's list this week. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll review, recover, and, and we'll go again next week. Very exciting. Congratulations on the win. Well done. Thanks, guys. So Clint Wilder now team chatting with Jacob Wiedering after a, a victory for Carlton by 16 points over Freo. It denies the Dockers the chance to jump into the top eight. Meanwhile, Brisbane beat Adelaide by 52 points and the Giants by nine over Melbourne. Here it was Port Adelaide by 34 over Hawthorne. So what that all means is Richmond are out of the eight and your other side lids are in. The GWS Giants are two points clear of the Tigers as the ladder sits tonight. There's three games tomorrow, and they're all played in Victoria. First of all, just after one Eastern, Sydney and West Coast at Caninia Park. And, Maisie, you'll be there for that. I will. Can't wait. Should be very... I never thought I'd be calling uh, Sydney West Coast (laughs) in Geelong, (laughs) but it should be a good game. First game ever at Caninia Park. Four premiership points not involving the Cats. Yeah. Uh, And And, and West Coast's last trip there wasn't very memorable, was it? And Sydney are actually quite handy down there as well. Mm. Uh, John Longmire is going to join us on Grandstand AFL Sunday tomorrow from 12 noon. I'll be in the studio oh, with Brett horse. Delidio and Brendan Goddard. So we'll catch up with John Longmire before that. Then, Beads, you and I are off to the G for Collingwood St Kilda. Well, hopefully it's a lot better than what we saw tonight. Beads, you'll have a full <laughs> sleep. He'll be ready to go and excited. How excited does he sound for it? Settle <laughs> What's the weather doing tomorrow? You'll be with us. I think it's going to be a little bit wet. Oh, great. And then from 12, <laughs> and then the Twilight game is Western Bulldogs, North Melbourne. Good luck to Jess Webster calling the game. Al right, Nicholson, Jess. Mick Moldhouse, and David Mundy part of our team tomorrow. Good but Grandstand AFL back from 12 noon tomorrow, Eastern. Thanks to Tom, back in the studio, to Jules, to Jess, to our crew here, signing off. Port winners by 34 points in Burgoyne's 400th. Out now from ABC Books. How do greenhouse gases trap 400,000 Hiroshima bombs worth of heat each day? And who did the early research into climate change only to spend billions trying to cover it up? G'day, Dr. Carl here. Find out the answers to these questions and more with my new book, Dr. Carl's Little Book of Climate Change Science. Plus, how we can stop and even reverse global warming. Dr. Carl's Little Book of Climate Change Science. Book and audiobook available in bookshops and online. ABC Sport Digital Radio. ABC Sport. Your home of basketball. This is an ABC podcast.